once again face. All right, good evening. Uh, sorry we had some technical difficulties here. We missed a half inning, but we're live from Kelly Automotive Park where the Blue Sox are taking on the Chillicothe Paints this evening. Good inning for Nick Bucci in the first. Allowed a single, but got out of it. Scoreless, and now it's Butler's turn to go to bat. And they're going to face Adam Nijemeyer, who is uh, from Marshall University. So we'll, uh, as we go through this at bat, first off, I'm Jaron Steele, joined by Kellen Gersky tonight. But as we go through this bat, we'll give you the lineup. Strike call here. Um, leading off is Ben Carew. He's at the plate now. Then we got uh, Paven Parks batting second. Calvin Scott third. Christian Webb is in the cleanup spot. 0-1 is fouled off. Uh, Brady Gulikowski's batting sixth. Or fifth, I beg your pardon. Then uh, Ray Gonzalez is the DH. He's batting sixth. Then Damian Magalone seventh. Eric Bolton eighth. And Stefan Merkonja is batting ninth. And as I said, they're facing Adam Nigemeyer, who is, or Jacob Nigemeyer, not Adam, Jacob. My, my apologies. Here's the pitch. It's outside. It's one and two. Um, Blue Sox have come in losers of four straight. The last one actually came when Nick Bucci was on the hill last Thursday. One, two. Oh, line drive, base hit out the center field. A good way to start it for Ben Crew. Blue Sox had the leadoff runner on. They've slipped. Butler slipped to last place at eight and um, eleven. While the while the Paints come in, the division leaders at uh, thirteen and six, thirteen and seven. Um, so yeah, it's uh, first time we've seen Chillicothe this year, but from the numbers. They've been uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, th there's no doubt about it. And, um, you know, Butler's got a chance here to, you know, knock off the number one team in, in the division so far and, you know, try to climb out of the cellar, if you will. Well, a little chopper right back to Nijemeyer. Throw to second for one on the first. Parks will beat it out. Fielder's choice puts him on first with one out. Defensively for Chillicothe, it's uh, – we got – Tanner Picnic behind home plate. Dalton Bollinger at first. Drake Peggs at second. Ben Aslett at third. Uh, Chris Pertucci at shortstop. In left field is Kyle Orloff. And Tyler Callis is in center. And Zachary Owings is in right. And now we got Calvin Scott at the plate. And he is... Hit the ball well since coming here uh, about a week into the season. Yeah, Scott uh, hit a home run in his first night here. That was, what, about a week ago? And, uh, yeah, ever since then, he's been hitting the ball hard, hitting it well, exactly what you uh, expect out of the three spot. Takes a pitch low. Nickemeyer started his career at Ohio State and then went to junior college for a year before landing with the Thundering Herd. He takes a... He gets a called strike here from our home plate umpire tonight, who is Jack Peck, and Michael Gerber is working the bases. Parks at first, one on and one out, in a one-one count. Runner takes off. Here's the throw from Picnic. Oh it is out into center field, and Parks is going to make it the third on an E2 Picnic. That was no Picnic there. That ball is turned into center field. My goodness. We'll take it. Stolen base, E2. Yeah, you knew from the jump that that ball wasn't going to make it to second base. <laughs> uh, well, it did. It would have made it. Yeah, it, it made it all right. Yeah, it made it. Just it made a little it. overthrown. It never shot the landing. Yeah, trip. you knew it as soon as he threw it that uh, he must have had it slip out of his hand as he threw it. But, yeah, you're exactly right. The, the Blue Sox will take it, trying to get an early run here. Yeah, chance to do just that. And a foul ball here by Scott, 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, you got to take advantage of it. This is the yeah. best team in the league right now and if they're going to give you gifts you got to take them yeah no doubt about it and uh you know this is exactly what butler is hoped for and you know against a team like this you just got to stack as many chips as you can an opportunity to score as many runs as you can and that's not a good start uh, scott takes a called strike three for the second out that is a very good pitch from nigemeyer he, he put that right on the corner. Yeah. yeah, it's a pitch that'll tie you up in knots as a hitter. Even though you do have two strikes on you, you're thinking, okay, that's going to be inside. And the curveball just drops over, you know, over the corner. And that's just a that's just a darn good pitch there by Nigemeyer. Well, here's Webb. He takes a called strike on a fastball. This 
as I said, Butler coming in on a four game losing streak. In fact, the last uh, night was just one to forget. There's a line drive to right, but right at the right fielder Owings who catches it for the third out. So no runs, a hit, an error, and a man left. On to the second here, we'll give you the lineup for the paints. <laughs> Owings leads it off. Uh, playing right field wire number 33, followed by number four, Chris Pertucci. Playing shortstop. The DH tonight is Chad Roberts. He's batting third. And wire number 15 then is Tyler Callis, the center fielder, who will wear number 12. And those are the guys who batted in the first inning that we, that we missed. Then Kyle Orloff, the left fielder, will bat fifth and wear number seven, followed by number two, Ben Aslett, the third baseman. Tanner Picnic, the catcher, will bat seventh and wear number 34, followed by Dalton Bollinger, the first baseman, wearing number 17. And then it will be Drake Peggs, number 26. Good baseball name, Drake Peggs, uh, playing second base and batting ninth. Well, uh, you got to see Bucci. I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off. <laughs> you got to see Bucci in the first inning. What did you see from him out there? Oh, uh, no, just consistency from Bucci. Looks like the, the Bucci that pitched uh, last week and pitched very, very well through a lot of strikes. Uh, got ahead of guys early and uh, you know, it resulted in, uh, I think, two outs and less than eight pitches, I think, the first two batters, both resulting in outs and less than eight pitches and then the single, um, but then able to strike out a callus right after that. And, uh, you know, a, a good good first inning for Nick Bucci. Still, uh, you know, number of innings to go here in a 0-0 game, but uh, Bucci looked uh, pretty darn good in the first inning. You know, we'll turn our attention to Kyle Orloff here. Pops up the first pitch. That'll make it out of the stadium. Tell you, the umpire, or the the bus driver, <laughs> parked the bus directly behind the stadium, and boy, that's a that's a scary proposition. Most of them park them way out <laughs> in in left field. I, I called a strike here. I would not want my uh, my bus no. to be hanging out there. They might have a couple dents in it by the end of the night. Yeah, no doubt. And we we've, we've seen balls go uh, right there quite a few times over the course of a ball game, and. You know, if it goes there tonight, it's going to probably hit that bus. Yeah, well, it's a one-two count and a ball lined right to Maglione. He had to scoot a little bit towards second base, but he's got it for the out. And um, it's just uh, Nick okay. Bucci continuing to the third baseman number where he picked up right where he left off from last week, like you said. Yeah, that was a good pitch right there on Orloff. Orloff actually did a good job fighting it off. Look, like it was high and tight, uh, but Orloff got a good piece of the bat on it and uh, was able to fight it off, kind of a – uh, sinking liner, but a nice play made over there uh, at second by Maglione. This is a ground ball to Maglione, 4 3, 2 away. Now the and Bucci again, he's just throwing a lot of strikes, getting ahead of hitters, and uh, he's resulted in a couple quick outs here to start this inning, same way he started the, uh, the first inning. Absolutely. He's, he's doing what he has to do to limit the pitch count. And, and, and get guys out, and he's, he's doing both very well to this point. He's ahead 0-1 here on uh, Picnic, who pops oh pitch boy. up. Oh, look out, bus. Oh, got oh. over. Yeah, made it over. Might hear that a few times <laughs> tonight. And curveball away. Defensively for Butler, we got Eric Bolton behind the home plate, and then uh, Christian Webb at first. We mentioned Maglione at second. Foul ball here. And then we got Gulakowski at third, Parks at short, Merkonja in left, Carew in center, and Scott in right. Uh, Picnic comes in hitting 304. He does have a homer on the summer. Behind 1 2 here is the pitch from Bucci. Fastball swing and a miss strike three. 1 2 3 go the paints here in the second. On to the bottom half. It's scoreless.
Gulikowski. All right, ready to go here in the bottom of the second. Brady Gulikowski leads off, followed by Gonzalez and Maglione. Scoreless game so far, and Nijemeyer tries a, I don't know what that was, a change up, first pitch change up maybe? Yeah, I don't know, it didn't, it didn't have much break to it, it didn't have much speed to it either. 1-0, and it's called strike. Gulikowski this summer has, has had pretty good numbers as far as uh, pitch is upstairs. The strikeout to uh, walks on the summer. He's drawn the most walks on the team. 2 1 is a bit high. So he's, in the hole. he's in the driver's seat here. Kulikowski has drawn 13 walks and now make it 14 as he heads down to first and has struck, and struck, struck out only 17 times. So he's, he's keeping a pretty good um, ratio there. For, for yeah, no, no doubt ball. about it. And you, it's, it's interesting, you know, you bring up the walks and uh, that, that he's leading the team and how, uh, you know, how perfect he, he draws a walk. And it's well, weird when you bring things up like that, that yeah. they end up happening. So. One of the biggest problems we've had this summer is the strikeout. We've struck out 166 times, but we've also drawn 90 walks. So 91 now. And Gonzalez is behind 0-1. Ray is hitting 244, a trio of doubles, and has four runs batted in. But looking to, he, he was hitting about 400 the first week of the year. And swings through here. But uh, just looking to get, get back to that uh, more consistent hitting. Because he's uh, had a bit of a rough stretch the last week or so. Maybe not a week, maybe three, three or four games. Ball popped up over top of our heads. Foul ball. Uh, stay alive here. And it's an important at bat for Ray Gonzalez. He's trying to move up Gulikowski after he walked uh, in the first at bat this inning. Don't want to roll into a double play here if you're Gonzalez. And instead he's gonna just pop one up. And the shortstop out there, Pertucci, calls off Aslett and makes the catch for the first out. So. Not a double play, but does, is not able to advance the runner either. Maglione has been hitting the ball pretty well. He had a home run on Tuesday in Champion City. He had a couple of extra base hits here in uh, the weekend series of West Virginia. Throw it at first. Gulikowski leaning the wrong way, but able to get back. And as you mentioned, Maglione hitting the ball well. Uh, so well the past couple uh, games that you might even see a hit and run here. Normally you see that with, you know, a guy down in the order, but he is hitting the ball well. well so he's gonna, yeah, try to bunt. This could be a tough play. A bare hand attempt by Aslett is not going to do the job here. That should be an infield single for Maglione. Great bunt. And even if he does field that on the bare hand. That's, yeah, it's yeah. going to be tough. Yeah, that's especially... Cool. That's one, hand. Yeah, that's one where you're just probably going to not throw it anyway. Yeah, you probably just keep that thing in your back pocket. Um, and actually, a good job um, by Chilla Coffee realizing that um, that uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, the third base was unoccupied. They all pointed as soon as uh, they the, the third baseman over there crowded. As soon as Aslett uh, corralled the ball over there, they pointed to third, knowing that Gulikowski could take off. Oh, Eric Bolton is hit, and the bases are loaded. Yeah. Pitch came inside, he didn't move, just took it and heads down to first. And Merkonja, the nine man, is up in a big spot here. A time call, looks like they're gonna have a meeting here. As Chillicothe as coming off an extra innings loss last night to West Virginia. Uh, seven, seven to six in 10. Ended in a three game winning streak for the Paints, who, as we said, come in at 13 and seven. 
atop not only the East, but the best record in the league to this point. Uh, I believe that Lafayette is 12 and 7. So here we go. Merconja, bases loaded. We got Gulikowski at third. We got Maglione at second and Bolton at first. And big spot here in the second inning. Butler has had uh, a scoring opportunity in each inning so far. First pitch has popped up and it will make it out of the stadium. There it is. Hit the. Hey, the guy's in the bus right now. <laughs> the bus driver. He just watched that ball bounce by. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe I should back this thing up. No, nope. I doubt it. No, nope. no, probably not. If, we, if you hear nah. some beeping in the background, that's what it yeah. is. That's a good aggressive swing early on uh, by by Merconja, knowing that he's got to hit the ball. You know, he's got to put it in play. Oh, oh they there. got the runner picked off at Ooh. second. Oh my goodness, they got a gift. I'm pretty sure he got him. Oh, baby. But uh, Maglione apparently got his hand back just in time. What a, what a he heady play by both the yes. shortstop, Pertucci, and the pitcher, Niggemeyer, to uh, pick him off. Yeah. But uh, we might, might have got a gift there. Unless he got his hand to that back corner. I mean, the throw beat him, but it was kind of a high throw. Had to make a long tag. It looked like Maglione may have got that backhand in there, but the throw definitely beat him. That was a heck of a play. Contra with a foul to the screen. Oh man, that's that's a close one. Obviously, the base umpire, Mr. Gerber, has a better view than we do, but yep. boy, that's too close. You can't be getting Deep caught point. off second base out there. Ooh. Pitch inside Merconja, able to sneak out of the way of it. Oh, two. Uh, if you're if you're Niggemeyer, you don't want to hit Merconja no, and put a run in. You certainly don't yeah. want to do that. And Merconja kind of got out of the way of it. You'd in that situation, down 0-2, that's kind of a gift for the hitter. Yeah. Curveball is a foul ball. Oh, barely got a piece of that to stay alive. Yeah, and that's, uh, you saw the, the, the catcher picnic kind of slap his glove there in frustration. That's when he probably felt like he should have squeezed. And that could come back uh, to haunt Chilikov here. It gives, it gives Merkonja another opportunity here uh, to see a, another pitch. One, two again. Merconja pops it up. That could be playable for the first baseman. Yeah, it's going to make it out of here and land in the stands foul. I, for a second, I thought maybe that was going to curl yeah. back in enough for uh, first baseman Bollinger to, to catch it, but thankfully, it, uh, not much wind blowing here. Kept it in the stadium. Yeah, and it's a good at bat uh, by Merconja. He's got down uh, to two strikes, but he keeps battling two foul balls in a row here. Uh, you never know. Could result in a mistake um, by Niggemeyer. Just a ball that Merconja could put in play here. One, two upstairs. Good take. That was extremely close, but uh, it was above the belt. So, two, two. And Merconja found off some pitches. He's kept himself in it. And now the pitch is lined up go. the middle for a base hit. Gulikowski's in to score. Coming around third and coming in to score is Maglione. A two RBI single by Merconja makes it two nothing. And what what a uh, what an at bat there yeah. by Merconja. I mean he, he worked the count, saw saw as, as many pitches as he could, cut his swing down there, didn't try to do too much with that pitch, just try to put it in play hard. Line drive right back where it came from. Butler's up two nothing. That's that's a big start. Yeah, only one out still. Uh, two guys on, Bolton and now Rakonja for Ben Carew, who singled to lead off the bottom of the first. Pitch from Niggemeyer is upstairs to Carew. Back in the leadoff spot tonight after being down in a nine hole. He's that perfect guy you can put in either one of them spots because you want either a guy that's going to get on base or a guy that's going to turn the lineup over. Uh, that's oftentimes in this league you'll see the guy either bat first or ninth. Right. Pitch outside, 2-0. And, oh. and Carew's in a good count here. And as you said, he, he's got a knack for getting on base, just finding his way on base. And, you know, he's up early in the count here. It's a good sign. Called strike here. Blue Sox are without the services of James Meeker tonight, who was 
ejected in last night's game. In talking with uh, our coaches today, probably was a, it was a tough ejection, we'll put it that way, for, for Meeker. And that's a tough lo loss because he's there's a ground ball. This could be two on the first. And it pulled him off the bag. So good hustle by Carew. He's able to make it on a fielder's choice. Retired in second by Peggs is Merconja for the second out. But we'll see what happens here. That's a, that's a big, uh, big, good job of Carew running to extend the inning. Now if Parks gets a base hit, you get another run in. Yeah, and if Parks hit, hits a gap, uh, Carew could possibly score from yeah. first base as well. Um, I and mean, that was a tough call. Couldn't really see it from here, uh, whether – uh, the first baseman over there pulled his foot, Bollinger. Uh, tough to tell from our vantage point, obviously. Yeah. Throw definitely would have beaten him, though. Would have been a double play had he stayed on the bag. Yeah, it would have. But uh, hu hustling by Carew to force that yeah. throw. And also a good slide at second by uh, Merconja. And here's the 0 1 upcoming. Here it is. And pitches inside. Runner goes. Throw down. And Carew is thrown out at second base. Nice throw by Picnic. He did not have a good one in the early part of the game, but that was right on the money. Tagged by Pegs ends the inning. So, Blue Sox do get on the board. They score a pair of runs on three hits, no errors, and leave one man at third. We'll go to the third with Butler ahead, two to nothing. I made a mistake last inning. It was only two hits for the for the Blue Sox, but uh, regardless, two runs come across. Bollinger ready to go here for Chillicothe in the third with Nick Bucci on the hill. He's allowed just one base runner through the first six or seven he's faced, I should say. Here's the pitch. It's a check swing called strike regardless on the outer half. Got to give Eric Bolton credit last inning too. He's hit mm -hmm. by a pitch. Uh, allowed them to load the bases, and um, you know he's been he's been a very good catcher behind home plate, but uh, he hasn't had the bat going this summer to this point, and uh, you know that was a a, a good selfless thing to, yep. to get hit by a pitch, get on base, and then Rakonja coming through. Here's a base hit out in the left by Bollinger, the eight man, leads off the third with a single. Yeah, and that was a pitch that Bucci left up a little bit. Don't know if it was a curveball or some sort of off-speed pitch, but uh, Bollinger stuck, stuck with it, and that's an easy pitch to do when it's up chest high, and he just roped it in between the gap between short and third. All right, so now Drake Pegg's the nine hitter, left-handed hitter. His, his number 26 on his jersey takes up his whole body. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's not the biggest guy. But uh, he takes a strike here. He's he, he's from Eastern Michigan, which is, of course, in the Mid American Conference. A lot of these guys every summer seem to come from that conference. It's a good, it's a very good conference. Um, 
Kent State obviously always a power. Um, Ball State has been very good in recent years. Called their pitch called a ball one and one. Um, this year, I think Ohio went to the uh, regionals. Of course, Kent State made that run to the College yeah. World Series a few years back. It was 2012. Yeah, it was. Uh, one one is popped up way up. And the shortstop out there in foul territory making the catch is Paven Parks for the first out. Well, that ball was up there for a while. And it started out pretty much right in line with uh, Gulikowski playing off the bag at third. It just started taking a detour into foul territory. Made a long run for, for Parks, but he got there in plenty of time. Yeah, it was a heck of a, a run uh, by Parks, knowing off the bat that he might have a chance at that. If he kind of would have stayed put and watched it for a second, probably would have fell in for a hit, or it would have resulted in a foul ball, excuse me, but a uh, heck, heck of an effort there. Owings, yeah, Owings takes inside here. He went down three and assisted his first time up. He's also from Eastern Michigan. Paints have guys from Eastern Michigan, Western Michigan, Buffalo, which unfortunately just g got rid of their baseball program at the end of this year. Called a pitch called a ball, a little bit low, two and zero. Ohio University, Toledo, so they're well represented in the MAC. They even have a Miami of Ohio kid. Two zero, upcoming from Bucci. Here it is. It's hit well to center field, but Ben Cruz there will drift over towards left, left center, make the catch two away. And Bucci still uh, throwing a ton of strikes here. Now Hasn't really got behind many guys tonight. And when you do that, um, you know, you, you force guys to swing the bat a lot more than they probably want to. And he's getting a lot of weak contact tonight is Bucci. And so far through three, he's been uh, the Nick Bucci of, of last week. Yeah, it's it's been a good, good, impressive start. And it's something they needed, mm -hmm. especially after last night. Unfortunately, Zach Henderson only able to go one inning, taxing the bullpen a little bit. Uh, we're without a bullpen arm tonight. Foul ball here by Pertucci. Oh. Oh. I think I stabbed <laughs> you with my pen there as I turned yeah, around to look right. at the bus. I, I was I was <laughs> doing the same thing. So yeah, it's it all good. But uh, <laughs> well, here we go. Uh, Bucci, like you said, uh, but as I say, uh, you, you tax the bullpen without Meeker yep. an arm tonight. Yep. Um, so you'd like to see him get some innings here this evening. Here's the pitch. It is a line drive right to Maglione. <laughs> who leaps up in the air and makes the catch for the final out. Some hard hit liners, but right at people, you'll take them every time, and we'll do the, we'll do here. And no runs, one hit, no errors, one man left on base. On to the bottom half of the third inning with the Blue Sox leading two to nothing. It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. There exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together, we can work to eradicate the high-level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female, and may be teenagers or middle-aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game. Paven Parks ready to go. Third inning, Blue Sox head 2-0. And a nice curveball from Niggemeyer to start the bottom half. He has had some troubles, but uh, he's been capable, as his numbers show. Oh, this ball hit well to left field. 
And That's that ball is fair. still going, and it's off the wall. I'll tell you what, the left fielder out there, Orloff, didn't see it or something because he didn't give much of a chance to it. Oh, throw wow. to third, what a throw, but Parks Woo! able to slide in ahead of the tag of Aslett for a leadoff triple. Uh, he may have been with that throw, but I tell you, I, I don't think Orloff saw the ball because he never, he was pretty nonchalant out there in left field until that ball fell down. Yeah, I don't think he ever saw it. To be, I, I think he saw it off the bat, but he didn't see it after that. He started kind of like looking straight up in the air, mm -hmm. like he had a beat on it, and then all of a sudden I look up, that ball's hitting the wall. Yeah. You know, he was not even close to it. Yeah, hard hit grounder. This should get the run in. 4-3 uh, put out, but it's an RBI for Scott, and it's now 3-0. That's a good piece of hitting, getting that ball to the first pitch, hit it to the right side of the infield, get the run in, add on to the lead. Yeah, it's exactly what you want to do if you're Calvin Scott. He uh, struck out with a man at third and at the last the last at bat in the first inning. This time he makes up for it and does exactly what you're taught to do as a hitter with a man on third. Hit it the other way and score a run. Well, here's Christian Webb who out to right field his first time up. The so far uh, things are going the Blue Sox way. Paul ball out of play by Webb, but um, going back, to, I don't know. Maybe Orloff thought that was gone. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. I, he he didn't really have much of a reaction. No, which is he really why didn't. I just think he kind of just lost it. I mean, it, I don't think he makes that play regardless. No, that ball was hit well, but it, it probably holds him to a double at least. It hit off the wall on the fly, but. That's good opposite field power. That ball's way up in the air. Shorts up. Pertucci still waiting for it to come down. Now there it is for the out. And yeah, so we'll take it though. I mean, you're right. Maybe he holds him to a double if he Maybe, gets there. Yeah. I mean, I think I think the only reason that 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 Parks went to third was because he was just getting to the ball. Yeah. When he got to second, or when he was getting close to second base. I mean, he uncorked a heck of a throw out there. Did Orloff, but um, you know, he, with an arm like that, he probably definitely holds Parks to a double. One-one count on Gulikowski. Walked his last time up, and then came around to score. Takes a pitch inside again here. One foul ball. Oh, look out, look out, look out. Oh, my. Those are the worst. When they hit off of the top of the general mission and come careening back down to field low, but thankfully went over top of everybody and back into the field of play. <laughs> yeah, you don't see that one a whole lot. I and mean, Normally it goes straight down. That one caromed out. Too, too high. Full count here. Two away. And the Blue Sox ahead 3 nothing. Four hits for Butler, two for the King, or for the Paints. And one error for the Paints. Oh, hard liner to right field. That's going to get down in front of Owings for a two-out single. Yeah, and Gulikowski waited on that curveball. He just uh, pulled it right down the line. And a, a smart move out there by Owings in right field. Looked like he was going to come in and try to catch that ball. But if you commit like that on a ball hit that hard, that ball probably would have went to the wall if he didn't catch it. Gonzalez takes inside. Ray popped up his first time up. And um, I imagine that Gulikowski will be on the run here if he gets the opportunity. Gonzalez takes a little bit away. On the summer, Gulikowski has three stolen bases. The throw over to first. Niggemeyer checking on him. With the, in, we mentioned it uh, in Gonzalez's first at bat in the second inning that um, you know he's been struggling to hit the ball a little bit, struggling to uh, get on base, and maybe a good way to get him out of it would be a hit and run here, just a ground ball to the right side that maybe could get him going a little bit. 2-0 popped up on the infield. Third baseman Aslett calls everybody off, makes the catch to end the inning. That one run comes in after a leadoff triple by Paven okay. Parks. And, and we'll go to the fourth inning with Butler ahead 3-0. 
Chad Roberts is in the box. He singled his first time up, but that's the only one of only two hits that Nick Bucci has given up to this point. Blue Sox leading three nothing in the top of the fourth, and the pitch is there for a called strike. Bucci with a good fastball, and uh, he's worked in some off speed here and there, but the uh, fastball is definitely his ticket. Yeah, and he's getting ahead of hitters with that fastball. Normally, that's what he's throwing. There it is again. Same location. Yeah, pretty much. And he's throwing that early in the count, which makes his off-speed stuff that much better. When you're throwing that fastball effectively for strikes, it makes your, uh, your off-speed stuff so much better. Went a little bit high with that fastball. Nick goes to Teal College, which is up in... Um, Greenville. Greenville. There yeah. we go, yeah. Yeah, it's your home day. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's part of the pack. Yep. And which sent a team to the Division Three World Series this year, WNJ. They took second place at, at yeah, the uh, World that's Series. True. And here's the one, two after a foul ball. It's up high again. Bucci went to Alderdice down in the city of Pittsburgh, one of the city league schools. But they play in the Whipple for baseball, just because there's not enough teams in the city league to. And then foul tip, and into the mitt for strike three. That is. The third K of the night for Bucci. Yeah, and he's been good uh, tonight. He really is throwing that fastball well, and he's just uh, throwing it for strikes. And when you get that, you know, that first pitch for a strike nine times out of ten, that, that puts the hitters at a disadvantage. And so far tonight, uh, Bucci has done that, and you see why there's only two hits up on the scoreboard right now uh, for Chillicothe. Actually, missed. Remember, I think the last start he, he started, what, 16 in a row strikes? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I forgot all about that. Yeah, he's uh, behind 2-0 to Callis from Ohio State. That was hitting 353, which leads the team. The yeah, ball's hit high, uh, but foul. Gulikowski's chasing it, but that will make it into the parking lot. Callis with six doubles, three homers, and 15 runs batted in in 68 at bats. Ohio State, a rare down year for them this year. Didn't even make the Big Ten tournament. So that's uncharacteristic of them, to say the least. Usually one of the top teams in that conference. This ball is hit pretty well to left field. Marconja is trying to shield himself from the sun, and he does so effectively and makes the catch. Yeah, it looked like he was having some trouble out there, as you said, Merkonja. And, and this is the time of night where the sun uh, is really tough. It's it's about, you know, out on the field, it's about head high, pretty much. And it's right where that ball, um, it's literally right in your sight of view. And uh, we saw what in the last, I think it was the last time I was on with you, Jaron. Yeah, I think Mer Merkonja. Yeah, it was Merkonja. Yeah. He kind of just fell down out there, didn't know where the ball was. 
He's lucky he fell down. Gr That's chopper true. to short. Parks can't quite come up with it. That should be an errors on Pavin. We'll see what they roll here. I mean, he was going towards second, but he should have had that ball. I think he would tell you that. Yeah, I think uh, I think he gets him too. I mean, not a ton of speed uh, from Orloff. Uh, it looked like you know that ball was hit pretty hard too. So he probably you know would have had a lot of time. Although they do give him a hit. Huh. He just had he had his glove down. It just went right underneath it. I think he got a piece of his glove. I think he got maybe the heel yeah. of his glove, but. That's a play that Pavin will tell you he probably should have made, and but I mean, I guess uh, I guess uh, Orloff will take it. The uh, the in infield single. Yeah, and that brings up Aslett. Extends the inning for Aslett. A uh, little chopper to first. Webb will take it to the bag himself to close the inning out. Three unassisted. No runs. One hit. No error. And one man left on base. Bottom of the fourth coming up. Butler three. And Chillicothe, nothing. Maglione walking towards the box. Blue Sox leading 3-0 through three and a half innings. Way at the bottom of the fourth year. Bolton will follow him and Mercanjo who's had a two RBI single to get the Blue Sox ahead back in the second inning. Maglione's first pitch popped way up. That's going to land in the first row of the stands. Those are the ones that will get somebody one of these yeah. days. That thing was up there for a long time, and I don't think anybody that was sitting near where that ball landed was looking up. <laughs> no, it didn't look like it at all. Everyone, well, it be everyone behind them was, though. That, that was happened in front of us the other right. night. Yeah. Yeah, the, thankfully, the one person was looking up and was able to knock the ball away from an old lady's head. An elderly lady's head. Not old. Well, she's old, too. But <laughs> Here's the pitch. 0-1. It's a little bit high. Maglione takes... He's raised his average to 280 on the summer. Has seven runs batted in. Takes again. He's you know, ahead 2 1. Goes to Malone, which is by uh, Canton. Home of the Hall of Fame of pro football. 1 1. Outside. And so far uh, for Butler. Uh, it um, should be 3 and 1 now. Right? Yeah. Yeah, 3 yeah, and 1. Yeah, it is 3 and 1. Oh, hard hit ball to left field, but right wow. at the left fielder Orloff, who comes in about three steps. He was playing kind of shallow to begin with, and he makes the catch for the out. Couldn't hit that ball any better, no. unfortunately, right at somebody. Yeah, and you're exactly right. The left fielder was playing in, and uh, if he wasn't playing in, that probably falls in for a hit. He probably pulls up on a ball hit that hard, but just tough luck there for Maglione. I mean, he hit the ball right on the screws, but right at the left fielder, nothing much you can really do about it. No, just go back to the dugout and say, if I keep hitting the ball like that, I'm going to get yeah. my base hit. Yeah, you're exactly right. If you, I mean, I think, <laughs> I think if you get out like that every time, it, you know, you you learn to live with that. I mean, you hit the ball hard, you do everything that you're supposed to do. Bolton down 0-1, a little grounder to third. Uh, up with it is Aslett, throw across in time, five three put out, and they're two away. Quickly here in the fourth. 
Now batting for the Blue Sox, number three. Yeah, and that, that ball, you know, uh, for Bolton, normally would get through. We see a, a lot of people uh, here at Butler, they play off the line for whatever reason that is. And then uh, Bolton hits one right down the third baseline, but Aslitz was pinching toward that line and turns into an out. Yeah, here's Merconja, which is a bouncer. Worked one of the better at-bats of the night. Actually, we'll, I'll just say what it is. It was the best at-bat yeah. of the night to this point. Fouling off a bunch of pitches before lining a pitch up the middle for a base hit that scored two runs. Curveball dips outside the zone. Two zero -oh. ground ball to third. Aslett again up with it, and his throw will retire. Merconja to end the inning. One, two, three, go to the Blue Sox for the first time tonight. We'll go to the fifth with Butler ahead, three nothing. And after the end of four innings, the Butler Blue Sox presented. Everyone's favorite part of the week is Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50 cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesocks.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox. Well, it's one of our favorite times of the game, Kellen. Yes. M Big Mac strikeout time, and our man who will be at the plate is Picnic. And he takes high. B Bucci has struck out three to this point. No, two, I, I beg your pardon. Looking for three. Oh, that, that was right the first time. Three. Oh, yeah, there it is. He struck out the guy in the fourth inning. There's a called strike. So we're two, one third of the way there yep. from the Big Mac strikeout. Everybody in attendance getting a free Big Mac. Fastball right there for a called strike. There it is. It's been a while since we've heard that yeah. because uh, yeah. the opposing player has gotten, you know, a base hit or uh, ground up. There is a swing and a miss. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a picnic of Big Mac. Oh, Jay, don't ever change. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> Please bring tonight's game ticket, to, ticket tomorrow to all of the three McDonald's. <laughs> oh, and my. Free Big Mac. Well, we got one down, and that was a. Uh, uh, everybody's going to be happy about yeah. that here. I'm happy about yeah. that. That's the first one I think I've seen this year. Yeah. First pitch is inside to Bollinger. He singled his first time up. Bollinger played for the Paints last summer. Ground ball to third. Gulikowski's got it, and his throw is wide. Webb comes off the bag, but he tags Bollinger on the way by to get the out. Good job. Yeah. Webb doesn't play much first base in college. In fact, he's basically a catcher. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting some work this summer because we really only have one first baseman in Ferguson. So. Right. But uh, he, he looked like a uh, you know a veteran there, yeah. coming off the bat, getting the tag. Yeah, knowing that that that, that play was probably going to pull him off the bag anyway. He. He did a good job of getting off the bag, catching the ball, and still tagging the runner. Really wasn't even all that close. Just a smart play by Webb, not trying to reach, you know, let a guy reach by a way of an error or a, a tough play. So a smart play, as you said. Pegs fouled out to Parks his first time up on the third base side of the park. Here's the 0-1. It's fouled out of play. Well, no, actually made it, it hit the top of the net and stayed in play but it doesn't matter, still foul ball 0-2. Oh 
Uh, Bucci cruising right along here. He's a, well, just three hits. Four strikeouts. Has not walked a batter to this point. And here's the 0-2. That's another foul ball. That's a defensive swing from Pegs there, just trying to get a piece of it. Yeah, I don't know why it is, but most of the time when you get a, a little guy like Pegs, he's normally one of the toughest guys to get out. And I don't know why, even in, in the major leagues, you, know, you look at a guy yeah. like Jose Altuve. Ichiro. Yeah, that's true. They're just the toughest guys to get out. Ground ball to second. Maglione's got it. Throw to first in plenty of time. And the paints go down one, two, three here in the fifth. Bottom half coming up with Butler ahead three nothing. Ben Carew in the box and takes pitch outside. Carew has been on base twice, reached on a single and a fielder's choice tonight. Blue Sox leading it 3 0. They have five hits. The Paints have three. Division leading Paints at that. They've led the division pretty much from the get go. Started out the year, I think, 5 and 1 the first week, mm -hmm. and they haven't looked back. 3-0 now on Carew. And four wide ones from Niggemeyer to start the fifth. Didn't even really come close to throwing a strike there. No, he really wasn't. I mean, every pitch was well out of the zone and um, a good job by Carew not chasing anything. And as we said, he's such a good leadoff hitter. You're not going to get him to chase pitches that far off the plate. And he's a disciplined hitter. And uh, a good job by the by crew to get on. So Paven Parks, who tripled in his last at bat, will go the other way again, foul it off, and that will make it out of play. Giving it a look at Orloff, but run out of real estate. Like in the opposite field here for for Paven Parks, he had a he had a good swing. Um, Hit a few home runs here last summer, but he, he was kind of like Ferguson last summer. Not to the scale that Ferguson's right. hitting home runs, but he struck out a lot. And that's why he was limited more to pitching last year than, than hitting. And he's behind here after a swing through. And, and you're exactly right. Paven Parks has put the ball in play a lot more uh, this year. As you said, he struck out a lot last year. I remember that about him. But, um, yeah, he, he's definitely putting the ball in play a lot more. And, He's getting on base a lot more, which will definitely keep you in the lineup. He hits his, misses away. That's like Ferguson this year. He got the day off tonight. 31 strikeouts and 63 at bats. Right. So, I mean, that's pretty much every other at bat you're striking out. Yeah. Although, what? He does have eight, eight home runs to it. Yeah, right. Though, so, so it's it's a prototypical power guy. Yeah. Pick your poison almost. Yeah. And. Carew gets back safely. Now he'll take a lead again. 
And here's the one two from Niggemeyer. Yeah, it's a line drive Ooh. base hit. And Carew is going to think about three, but he'll hold oh. up at second, and that's a good decision because oh, a yeah. good throw in by yeah. Owings out there in right field. But two men on, nobody out. You don't want to make that first down at third. No, not at all. You definitely don't want to do that. And it was a good job by Carew to freeze on the line. You know, that ball, I mean, it, it was hit super hard, and you almost think for a second that ball is going to be right at someone. It was almost head high but it kept going up as the ball left the infield. A good job by Crew to freeze and not try to push anything. As you said, you don't want to make the first out at third base. Probably would have been out if he would have went. Well, it looks like the paints are going to start warming up a couple of guys in the bullpen. Here comes a mound visit. And while that's going on, we can check out what's going on around the Prospect League. We play, of course, play Chillicothe again tomorrow night, 7.05. And that's fireworks night. All right, so we got West Virginia leading Kokomo 3 0 in the bottom of the third out in Kokomo. Terre Haute and Lafayette tied at one apiece in the bottom of the first. In the top of the first, Champion City and Springfield scoreless out in Springfield, Illinois. And Danville and Quincy scoreless out in Danville in the bottom of the first. All right, here we go. Calvin Scott, two men on, watches a pitch in for a called strike. Calvin grounded out, but drove in Parks last time up. And here's the 0-1. Just a bit low, possibly a bit off the plate as well. Yeah, it was a good pitch there uh, by Niggemeyer. He's trying to get Calvin Scott uh, to roll over and get him into a double play and try to get out of this inning without, with minimal damage. And uh, that's a good layoff there by Scott. One one's a bouncer to the backstop. Both runners will move up on a wild pitch. Right between the wickets of Picnic. And that now sets the Blue Sox table up pretty well here for Scott. Yeah, yeah, Turn. not a doubt about it. Mike Lang used to, or he still says, the turkey's on the table here. Yeah, they are. That's for sure. They're both out there. And now Scott, just like his last at-bat, just trying to hit something the other way on the ground. Two one or ground that ball work. that will be picked up by Aslett throw to or by actually the shortstop Pertucci throw to Aslett's way wide. Parks is gonna come in to score as well. Scott will make it to second. And the Blue Sox lead it five to nothing. As it looked like for a second Pertucci was gonna get a run at third. But turns out ball goes flying by and Parks alertly comes home. It's five nothing. Yeah, and that's, uh, that, that definitely would have been a single there for Scott. Um, obviously won't get an RBI on the second run there. It was kind of on that, that error that allowed that ball to get away. Um, and a good job by Paven Parks to take off. No indecision when he saw that ball skip past the third baseman and go towards home. He was going right off the jump, and that's that's uh, very good aggressiveness, and that's a, a big play, and that puts Butler up 5 nothing, up a 5 bill early on. Yeah, and that's going to be the end of the night for Nijemeyer. Nigemeyer, because he uh, already had one mile visit, and it looks like we got a left-hander coming out of the bullpen for Chillicothe. We'll get a number on him as he comes in. Pittsburgh Pirates Possibly and Seth Wise, is that number 13? No, it looks like 21, doesn't Pittsburgh it? Penguins. Yeah. 21, that Pittsburgh is Casey McConaughey. Who will come in to pitch for the Pates. Every season starts at Dick's. So Adam Niggemeyer will go four plus. And currently is responsible for five runs, one more out there on the bases, but I believe only two earned runs? Um. Because, oh yeah, it'd be three. Cause right, cause yeah. 
because Carew scored on the single. Yeah. And then the uh, and then Park scored on the air. So obviously that run isn't earned. It's actually four earned runs. Four out of the five. Yeah. The only one that isn't earned is Parks. And then depending on how the rest of this inning goes, the Scott one might not that, be earned. That's too. true. That's very true. Uh, six hits, two walks, one strikeout for Nikomai. Let's take a look at Casey McCon McConaughey numbers on the summer. He has appeared in three games, pitched three and two thirds innings, has allowed um, three hits, struck out four, walk six, and has a 4.9 ERA. Here's the taking off for third and getting in safely is Scott alertly stealing third base to put another runner 90 feet away. Yeah, and it, that's an interesting steal because as we talked about earlier, you don't want to make that first out at third, especially you know when you have no one out and a chance to put up a crooked number here, this thing, a little bigger crooked number, but oh. it ends up working out. Uh, one Webb upset himself for swinging at a ball in the turf. McConaughey from Case Western Reserve. It's the same school as our Mar Mark Gross. He's a native of Amherst, Ohio. 0 2. This is a smart move by Bigham, the Paints manager, because you got Gulikowski at this, another left handed hitter. But then we got Gonzalez, Maglione, Bolton, and Marcondra, all right-handed hitters. So these are two lefties. Yeah. He's going to see them both here. Uh, oh, Park's also a left-hander. And Webb goes down swinging for the first out. Yeah, it's a, that definitely is a good call, especially depending on how this at-bat turns out. Obviously, a uh, one-for-one on lefty-lefty matchups is uh, McConaughey. See how he uh, fares against, uh, against Gulikowski. So his only, his longest outing of the year is two innings. So he, he almost has that maybe a, uh, coming in here for this inning. And I don't know, hit Gulikowski here. Uh, it looked like he slipped on the mound. He turned around and looked at the, the rubber as if to say, uh, uh, you betrayed me. <laughs> Take it, runners on the corners here. And Gulikowski heads down to first. And the second time this summer that Gulikowski's been hit by a pitch. Here's Gonzalez. He takes a ball. And Gonzalez has popped out twice uh, to the left side of the infield, one to short and one to third. So he's trying to you know, get a big single here or just hit a ball hard. I'm sure that's something that Ray's worried about right now, trying to get that extra run this inning. Uh, could be a kind of a gift run uh, that Chilla Coffee. They allowed uh, Scott to get to second on an error, so you definitely want to make them pay for that. One and one runner takes off, but Gonzalez fouls it out of play and out of the stadium. Getting Ooh. closer to that bus out there. <laughs> uh, now, I got to ask, have you played, uh, you're right handed hitter. Yes. Correct. Now, when he's, when he's, this guy's not throwing all that hard. When he's soft tossed and lefties come out of the bullpen against you, how much is that? Uh, just kind of mess with you after seeing a guy who throws pretty hard from the right side after you know two or three at bats. Well, I mean, lefties uh, have always been, you know, for me personally, they they've been a uh, for for whatever reason they've just been tough. You don't see it a lot, and it's tough to replicate. Um, obviously, in in batting practice, you don't have a left-handed pitcher throwing to you. You don't see it a ton, and um, you know, especially you know, with a guy's throwing the ball a lot softer, and that'll screw with you. It's a, it's a tough thing to. To work with, especially you know, well, we were lucky at Westminster. We had a, 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 a pitching coach that uh, threw our BP a lot, and he was a lefty, so it gave us kind of a, a different advantage that a lot of teams don't have. Runner takes off, throw down. Scott's coming home, and he is going to be out. That's the first time that that has not worked. Scott must have got a really late jump because. Um, Gulikowski heads down to second on a stolen base, but Scott is thrown out two, six, two, two. Yep. How about that? 
yeah, playing catch out there. You don't see that a whole <laughs> lot, that's for sure. Pertucci with a good throw out there. Pitch is away from ball four. Now there's two men on again. Gonzalez will head down to first on the free pass. That really hurts now yeah. you know the base is loaded. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I I, I looked down at, uh, at at Cody down there at third base. He kind of like, you know, slapped his hands together as if to say, you know, man, we should have kind of should have waited for that to see what was going to happen in that at bat. Kind of frustrated there. But, uh, you know, a single here, we'll, we'll get that run right back for Maglione. Well, he's been hitting the ball well. Oh, yeah. Hit it on a rope last time. Unfortunately, right at Orloff out in left field. The pitch uh, is called a strike. On the outer half. Not a bad pitch from McConaughey. The 0 1 popped out of play. After a long pause, here's the 0-2 bouncer. Nice block by Picnic. We saw one go right between his legs earlier. He was out early that time to get the mitt down. Yeah, that's a that's a nice play there. You never know uh, when when a pass ball or something like that can change the game. And and that in this uh, specific situation it would have put two runners in scoring position instead of just the one that's there now one two Maglione strikes out the end inning Blue Sox do get two runs across on okay, one hit five. Out of five, Dennis agree. It's time for one error or two hits one error uh, I guess Scott did get a single on yeah. that and they leave two men on base We'll go to the six with Butler ahead five to nothing. Ready to go here in the top of the six. Butler, five, and Chillicothe, nothing. Nick Bucci, ready to go against Owings. Left-handed bat is 0 for 2 tonight. And a little grounder to first. Webb will flip to Bucci, who beats Owings in a foot race for the first out. The shortstop, Chris Petrucci. And Bucci, again, he, he sat for a little while there, uh, that long inning for Butler. Uh, he scored two runs that, that in the fifth, and... Sat for a little while, did Bucci, but like the like the Bucci of old, just yeah. throwing a bunch of strikes. He's been really, really good. Again, two nights, two starts in a row. He had that, well, actually three out of the four starts now. Yeah, he had that one that was kind of a a rough one in in uh, Lafayette, but uh, outside of that, he's been very, very good. And he was not helped by his defense that night. He gave up eleven runs, but uh, only seven of them were earned. Mm -hmm. And that was the point of the season where we had to have our starters go five innings <laughs> because of the lack of arms that we had. Called strike here, one and one, with one out to Chris Pertucci, who's 0 for 2. Gr uh, ground out the short and a line out the short. 
One one popped up. Yeah, that could be playable for Webb. He's going to give it a look, but I don't think he's going to get there. He's not. So it's just a foul ball, and it's one and two. Fastball right there for a call to strike three on the outer half. Pertucci didn't like the call, but he'll have to head back to the dugout. And that's now five strikeouts for Nick Bucci through five and two-thirds innings. Yeah, it's been a pretty good night for Nick Bucci. And Very just keep, yeah, just keeps throwing strikes. And I mean... You know, when you're a pitcher, uh, especially a starting pitcher, uh, it, well, any pitcher in general, really, your main job is just to throw strikes. You know, that's that's all you can control as a pitcher. And uh, so far, Bucci's doing that, although that'll be trouble. Yep, line drive fair down the right field line. Roberts has got two already. Scott's throw in. And Roberts will hold up at second with a two-out double. So if you're going to give up a double, I guess the best time to do it is with two outs. But, yeah. But uh, that breaks up a... Six in a row that he had retired and actually uh, eight of the last nine coming into that at bat. So it's, here's Callis, 0 for 2, struck out, strike out and a fly out. Two outs and Chillicothe's first runner in scoring position tonight is out there at second base. And it took the whole sixth inning. Yeah, it just shows how good Bucci has been. And that, that last pitch to Roberts looked like it was up a little bit. Roberts handled it pretty darn well. Uh, and he got a good piece of it off of Bucci. Foul ball by Callis. It's been a, been a cracker so far. 5 nothing as it's uh, basically been all Blue Sox at this point. A bunch of zeros on the board in the guest column. Bucci's delivery, framed up by Bolton, but rolled a ball. Yeah, nice crowd on hand. Expect a pretty big one tomorrow night, as long as uh, Mother Nature co cooperates. Line drive, base hit out into left. That will score a run. Merkonja gets to it, fires to second, and it forces Cal is to hold for a single, but it's an RBI single, and the paints are on the board. It's 5-1. to one. Yeah, another pitch that was up uh, by Nick Bucci, and, you know, that's uh, that's a killer when you leave the ball up, and you know, he's just done it in the last two batters. Really hasn't done it much all day long, but as you've seen, the last two batters have made him pay for it. Orlov is... At the plate, he takes away. He he singled in his last at bat. Hard line out the second too. So he's hit the ball hard twice. One zero -oh, line drive, base hit out in the left, and all of a sudden the paints may have uh, started to figure out Mr. Bucci here the third time around. Yeah, and Bucci again. He's just been up uh, this inning. Uh, the last three batters, every pitch has been above the letters or right at the letters. And, um, you know, obviously the, the paints are in first place for a reason. They can hit the ball. And obviously, um, you know, the, the pitches have been up in the last three batters. And all three guys have come through with two out hits. And, you know, Bucci's still one pitch away, just one pitch away from getting out of this inning. And uh, still a pretty good pitching performance thus far. You don't want to see, you know, a couple hits get strung together here, though. And, you know, ruin what has been a, a very good start. Yeah, he's gotten through five and two thirds on 68 pitches. That's, that's pretty good. Mm. Aslett, 0 for 2. Bolton, nice job to go out and maybe have a quick word with him, give him maybe calm him down a little yeah. bit. It's the first time he's really had any type of adversity this evening. It's the first time, really, that, that they've hit the ball hard off of him in mm -hmm. an inning. You know, three guys in a row have squared the ball up pretty well. 1 0 is. A bit high. 
ideally you'd like to get another inning out of out of Nick with the low pitch count. Uh, yeah. Try to get seven out of him tonight, but if he has a little bit more trouble this inning, might this might be his last one. Now way outside, three and zero. Oh. One pitch from loading the bases for Picnic, who's a strikeout candidate. He's struck Cade twice so far. Ball four. Now it might be time for Forbes to come out and have a quick word. Here he comes. Just throw right on cue. Number 34, Try to say, hey, Tanner Nick, Pickett. you're one pitch away from getting yeah. out of this thing. But, you know, throw some strikes. You got this guy twice. Yep. Let's trust it. And um, let's try to get out of here with a four-run lead. Right. And I'm, I'm sure one of the main focal points that uh, that Forbes is out there talking to him about is just to keep the ball low. You know, um, he hasn't really struggled with it all night until this inning. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Forbes is telling you, keep the ball low on this guy. You struck him out twice. You know, hopefully you can do it again. But, you know, you're not thinking strikeout. You're just thinking uh, some weak contact at someone and get out of this inning. But, you know, kind of a, a red flag when four guys consecutively reach base with two outs. Yeah, three hit the ball hard, and then he went, went a little wild with Asla. Didn't even give him a chance to swing the bat, really. No, yeah. Really, none of those pitches were that close. No, and so now it's Picnic. It was actually from Cannonsburg down 79. Oh, oh boy. boy, he just ropes one into the gap. That's all the way to the wall. And two runs are already in. Coming around third is Aslett. He'll score as well. A three RBI double by Picnic has cut the lead to one. Five to four. Yeah, and that's exactly what you didn't want to do. Another pitch up. That's been the theme this inning uh, for Nick Booch. He's just left the ball up. And uh, Chillicothe has made him pay for it. They really haven't seen the ball up much all game. Maybe that was why they were struggling so much. They um, haven't hit the ball well down. Uh, but this inning, they've really, really tattooed it. Uh, Bucci's got to bear down here and get a get Bollinger. This game's going to be tied all of a sudden. 5-4 the score, first pitch inside. Yeah, I'm wondering if the Sox have got some motion in the pen, but I don't see anybody loosening down there, although I'm, I'm blocked out by Mr. Spickett, so I can only see a tiny corner of the bullpen. 1-0. <laughs> Hard hit ball just Ooh. on the other side of the third base bag. Uh, good job by... Gulikowski over there and filled it. That was, might have got him. Yeah, that was kind of a weird. Uh, That's some weird English. Yeah, it, w it sounded good, but it, it just kind of died. I don't know if it just he got it off the end or maybe jammed him a little bit. But if that ball stays fair, I think you're right. I think Gulikowski would have had plenty of time to get him. Well, picnic out at second. And a long look by Bucci. Parks come in as if this, they had a pickoff play set up, but it might have just been a bluff to keep Picnic thinking out there and getting from too straying too far away from the base. Here's the pitch. It's a called strike on the outside corner. Bollinger immediately looked at Mr. Peck, the umpire, and said, w w was that, where was that? Was that on the outside corner? Good information. I mean, if you ask nicely, they'll tell you, and then you know what, you know, there's a swing and a miss. Strike three, and that'll end the inning. So, the, the paints to score four to get back into this thing. And we'll go to the Bottom half of the sixth with the Blue Sox leading five to four.
Bolton. Eric Bolton leads off the sixth inning. Butler leading five to four, but a crooked number put yeah. up by Chillicothe the last inning makes this interesting. Uh, McConaughey back out on the hill. Niggermeyer goes, f what, f four plus, and yep. uh, what do you allow? Uh, f five, well, runs. five runs and four of them weren't. Yep. So, yeah, that runner that he left out there, McConaughey took care of it. Right. And here's Bolton. He's at down 0 and 1 after a foul ball. McConaughey is going to miss high. He does not throw hard at all. He's a soft tossing lefty. Yeah. He's one of those. Uh, I don't know if you, uh, what movie uh, Major League? I think one of the major, the back to the minors one. I think they have oh, a jug. That's the worst. Yeah, one. it's not a good one. If they have a jug, actually, funny story. Uh, as this pitch is away, we were on our way out to. I want to say it was Chillicothe one year, and they put that movie in. That's the only reason I've ever seen it. Oh, they okay. had a junk ball lefty in the bullpen because it was like minor league baseball, yeah. you know. That's this guy reminds me of a yeah. little bit. Bolton fouls one out of play. Two and two. But, yeah, I mean, it's a good guy to have out of the bullpen there. You have a guy like uh, like Niggemeyer who was throwing the ball hard. I mean, he really yeah. was. I mean, Butler just squared him up a couple times, a couple times with guys on. I mean, he was throwing the ball hard. Then you bring a guy in like McConaughey that just kind of, you know, is a different, completely different pitcher. Pitch is low, and that'll fill the count up. Yeah, it's 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 tough to especially just like a guy who's throwing maybe seventy five, yeah, eighty at most. This is going from a guy who's from the right side throwing ninety, ninety two. Bolton fouls one into the net to stay alive. Well, it stays there too. How about that? Yeah, you don't see that a whole lot. No. Wrapped itself around there. It's still teetering. I can see it moving. Might plinko its way down <laughs> the net. Bouncer in for ball four. How about Bolt tonight? On base for the second time. He works a walk here. He was hit by a pitch earlier. And uh, looked like a leadoff hitter there. Getting, yeah. getting on base, you know, fouling a couple pitches off, drawing a walk. And time called here. Looks like number six is going out to get loose out there. What, who's that out there? Six. They even have a Creighton, Creighton Elridge. Maybe he's going out to catch. I think he, he might, might be, be going out to catch. He was loosening his arm, but he, yeah, he, of course yeah. you have to throw the ball back. Too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, besides the pitcher, the catcher's the guy that throws the ball the most, too. Well, they're, they're rearranging chairs out there, like <laughs> uh, get them off the hill. Uh, there is a guy, we have a right-hander. I don't know what number it is because their numbers are kind of hard to read. I know we use this excuse all the time, but this one, this time it's legit. It might be 36, possibly. That would be Kim Kimreda, Nick Kimreda. Maybe I, I can't make out the line. I know it's I think it is 36. Now that I look okay. at it again, yeah, there's a 36. There's a 35. That could Miranda, be Miranda. Well. He's six five, and then you got a we got a 32. That's Robinson. He's six three. So they're all about the same size. Marconja tries to drag bunt, throw to first, and Bolton able to sneak his hand back in. A good snap from Picnic. Yeah, good uh, good awareness there by Picnic, knowing that. Uh, the bunt attempt that, that Bolton's going to be off the bag a little more than he probably should be on a normal uh, play, a normal swing, and a good snap throw just a little late. McConja, drag bunt there. That was, uh, you know, I haven't seen one of the, them this year executed. I don't know if anybody's even tried that. That's a, It's like a softball play. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, a lost art in the game of baseball. Ball bounces away from Picnic, but Bolton stays put. Yeah, ball really didn't get away from him that much, and no. you know, Bolton behind the plate. And normally catchers aren't fleet of foot. Two guys warming up, double barrel, in the bullpen of the paints. Rakonja checks his swing on a bouncer. He's had two and one. Oh. 
be interesting to see if he, in this count, maybe tries to lay one down. Yeah, he's going to take a pitch outside. And pick, Picnic fakes the throw to first. So now, this is probably, I'm going to guess, McConaughey's last batter with two guys warmed up in the bullpen. Well, actually, only one's throwing, I yeah. think. One's just kind of like going oh, through the right. motion of throwing. It's kind of weird, honestly. He's Oh, ball hit the center field in fairly well, going back and still going back oh, wow. and making the catch over his shoulder out there is the center fielder, Callis, for the out. Oh, my, takes extra bases away from Merconja. Yeah, you can't hit a ball much better than that. I mean, we've talked, we've said that a couple times tonight, but I mean, Merconja put a charge in that thing, and I mean, that's a heck of a running catch out there. He ran a, a good way out there, did Callis, to make that play, and. Impressive. I mean, that might have scored Bolton from first base. I mean, Bolton was rounding second when that ball was caught. I got to give him credit. He got, well, it was his last batter, regardless. Uh, he got him, he got around second, like you said, but he was charging the other way to get back to the to the first base bag. He could have been doubled off if he wasn't paying attention out there. But with one away, we will have a pitching change. McCona McConaughey goes one and a third. He's responsible for Bolton. He has not allowed, he did not allow a hit. He walked one, hit one, and struck out one. Or no, struck out two, I beg your pardon. Hey, let's see, who, what, what's the magic number here? 36, you were right. That's Nick. Tim Reda from Ohio University, a sophomore from Grand Ledge, Michigan. Get you some numbers on him here in a second. Cam Rita making his fifth appearance out of the pen this summer. He's gone seven and two thirds innings, seven strikeouts, has not allowed a walk, six hits, a 5.87 ERA, and in three of his four appearances this summer, he has allowed an earned run. Two, he allowed two runs against Champion City in his last appearance back on June 18th, uh, which was a 5 4 win for Chillicothe. He actually has a three and a record out of the pen, so he's kind of what, what do they call a uh, vulture. Uh, but uh, in his wins, he's giving up runs every time. Yeah. Except for uh, the first one against Kokomo when they won 871, an inning in the third did not allow a run. But uh, it's a small sample size, only seven and two thirds innings. But that tells me if he hasn't allowed a walk, that he's going to be around the plate a lot. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it looks like he's going to be a guy that's going to fill it up and. I mean, that's good news for the Blue Sox because they've been free swingers tonight. They've been hitting the ball hard. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. One of two things will happen when a guy throws a lot of strikes. Either A, you know, you're kind of forced to swing when you don't really want to uh, and you get the ball weak a lot. Or like Butler tonight, they've been swinging the bats well so they could possibly, you know, string a couple together here. Carew with a chopper to first. They got a chance at two. Throw on the second for one on the first. Carew will beat it out. The pitcher covering actually drops the ball anyway. So throw from Bollinger to Pertucci for one and then fielder's choice for Carew. But if anything, that puts a faster runner on first base. Yeah, that's true. And you know, I, you don't really want to trade an out there for a guy on base, but you're exactly right. You know, as we said in the last inning, if you know, with Carew on, if Paven Parks can can hit a gap, hit a ball down the line, it might, it might score a runner. It might, you know, get get that run in in Carew that maybe Bolton wouldn't score. So if if Chillicothe comes back to win this game tonight, we can put a star around the catch that Callis made yeah. out in center field. Throw over to first. Carew dives back. Pitches outside from Camrata.
who is from Ohio University. Sophomore there this spring. And pitch is popped out of play. Throw over to first, crew back standing up. I would imagine at some point Carew will try to take second here. It might be a hit and run situation as well. You might see Paven Parks, who is uh, two for three tonight. You might see him take a hack and try to get uh, Carew in motion. Carew has four stolen bases on the summer. He was caught stealing in the second inning. 2-1 count here to Parks. Call strike two and two. Bluff steal from Carew there. At least a long, uh, healthy lead. Now the 2-2 two -two count. Kim Rotter will step off. Must not have liked the signs he was getting from Picnic. They're uh, teammates at Ohio, so probably some familiarity there. Or he was just playing chicken yeah. with the runner. Yeah, you you don't want to get the uh, you don't want to get Carew, you know, into your rhythm. You don't want him to catch on to anything. Foul ball by Parks to stay alive on a looping curve ball. Yeah, that's that's what I was just thinking in my head right before you said that. Is he's probably just playing chicken with the runner yeah, right now. Yeah, I mean, you don't want him to tie me up or anything like that. Um, and as you said, you know, in, in with two outs, wouldn't be surprised to see Carew take off, and it wouldn't be surprised to see Paven Parks try to, uh, you know, put the ball in play, get a little hit and run action going. There it was. Yep, it was, but it's fouled out of play. It'll make it in the parking lot behind the Miller Lite party deck on the third base side. So, <laughs> so 2-2 two -two here with two outs. Um, I'm going to say try it again. Try it again. Just hit and run again here. Yeah, you might as well. I mean, there, there's two outs, and um, you know, even if Carew gets thrown out, you still have Parks leading off the next inning, who is two for three. So, really, it's not that bad of a trade-off. Yeah, that's actually – pretty good one that's actually what happened the last time he was uh, thrown out and then he had a triple yeah and ended up coming in and score pitch high three and two now will for yeah. sure be off on the pitch and yeah, no doubt about it he's going to be moving this has been a good at bat by by uh, Paven Parks as well he's fouled a couple tough pitches off and it might result in him getting a, a base knock here and or at least reaching and bringing up Calvin Scott who has two RBIs on the day so far Ball pop wow. foul out of play. That's a high pop up out of play. Carew getting some exercise. This happens from time to time when when you get that three two count with two outs. You have that runner on either first or second. Mm -hmm. It'll have to take off four or five times. Wind himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does happen a lot. It seems like every time it happens to you, you're the one that you know. Has five, six foul balls, but only one here. Yep, pitch outside, ball four. Good at bat by Parks. He's on base for the fourth time this evening. Now two runners on with some speed for Calvin Scott. RBI single that barely left the infield last time up, but uh, a poor decision by Pertucci to throw to third is actually a difference in this game because uh, Parks came in to score on that E6. And made it at that time five to one, Pain, or five nothing, I should say. Paints have clawed their way back into it here at five four. A check of s at second by Kermani misses high.
Scott. Got to be thinking fastball here. Oh. He gets a yeah. yeah, he gets a breaking ball and takes <laughs> a strike. Yeah, that's the. Uh, You're thinking one thing and then he throws another. That's that's why I have trust issues right there. Yeah. That's, that's, Is that you know, why? As a hitter, I mean. <laughs> My goodness, you're looking fastball 1-0, and then you get a breaker at the knees. That, that's just how it goes. Yeah, another breaking ball. This one dips out of the zone. Trust issues, and then, uh, the, you know, I can understand that, being a, being a guy, you're like, yeah, I got this fastball coming, and Bang. He drops a deuce <laughs> on you. <laughs> and, and nine times out of ten, you swing at that, and you just look yeah. silly, you know? Yeah, it drops the old yellow hammer, and then you're, you're sitting there going, why? This is a fastball, Kyle. What are you doing? There's a fastball. Sit there one. for a call. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's just, that's the life of baseball. Exactly right. That's why that's why this game's uh, one of the most frustrating games you'll ever play, yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, heck, the guys who were in the Hall of Fame yeah. got out seven times out of ten. 2-2, two -two, foul ball, just barely getting a piece of it. Scott to stay alive. I really liked what I've seen out of this Calvin Scott. He's been mm -hmm. a heck of a player for... Butler this summer in his 10 games. Played very well. He's three hitter at Delaware most of the year. And you can see why. Yeah. He, he has MLB draft potential in the future. Uh, pitch on the outer half. Rolled a strike. Scott didn't agree with it. But that'll end the inning. No runs. No hits. No errors. And two men left on base. Bottom of, bottom of the seventh. Bucci headed back out. 5 4 the score. Nick Bucci working the seventh. He had a rough six, but he'll look to pitch like he did the first five innings in this ball game. He'll face the 9-1-2 hitters. Pegs leads it off. He is 0 for 2. A foul out and a ground out. And a line drive into the gap. That's going to the wall almost. It'll actually get to the warning track before it's tracked down by Carew, a lead-off double and a tying run, is at in scoring position here with nobody out. Yeah, and that's uh, kind of why it was, in, in, as we talked about in the break, it was interesting that you would start the inning off with Bucci um, after struggling that last inning, and you know we, we kind of came to a conclusion here, at least off air, that maybe they were thinking, okay, uh, he hasn't, he didn't face these three guys in the last inning, um, so maybe, um, maybe this is. You know what'll get him going a little bit, but you don't want to see that happen. You don't want a a, a rope uh, to get in the gap and allow the tying run to to come to second base. Now you're putting a lot of pressure on uh, on Jack Herzing. Yep, that's who's coming in, Jack Herzing. Who will now inherit, like I said, tying run at second. Go ahead, run it to Platon Owings. Uh, Bucci's gonna go six plus. And allowed eight hits tonight, most of them coming in the last two innings.
I think Bucci only walked one as yeah. well as struck out six, yes. walk out, walked one. Half dozen strikeouts, one walk. He's responsible for the four runners, or the runner on second. He's already allowed four on the yeah. night, but he is in line for the win if they can somehow That's strand true. that runner at second. Yeah, and, and you, you kind of touched on it when you were talking about Bucci. He gave up eight hits. Four of them were in the uh, sixth inning. Uh, so if you, uh, you know, half of his hits that he gave up were in that fourth and, or in that sixth, if, excuse me, and, you know, you just, uh, in that inning, it was just everything fell for Chillicothe. What, one, two, three, four, five straight men reached. And now, uh, hopefully, uh, Jack Herzing can put together, a, you know, a save of, of Bucci's pretty good start other than one inning. So Herzing will make his ninth appearance, team leading ninth appearance of the summer. He's pitched 15 in the third innings, 19 strikeouts, 13 walks, 11 hits. Unfortunately, his last outing was not... Um, one of his better ones. He uh, allowed three runs on three hits in two and thir two thirds innings and gave up a walk off homer to Champion City on Tuesday night. But, but prior to that, he has not allowed he had not allowed an earned run since June seventh. So he's a little blip on the radar, hopefully. But uh, you know he's coming. He's going to face a lefty in Owings, followed by Pertucci who is a right-handed hitter, and then Roberts, who's a left-handed hitter. Or the three, do up to two out of three lefties. And hopefully you can get a strike out here. The last thing you want is that runner to right. move over. Yeah, you don't want him to move over with one out because then, um, you know, Petrucci would be coming up and all he's got to do is hit the ball to the right side. We've got a tie ball game. Um, so, you know, if you're hersing or you're hoping for a, you know, a, a kind of a, not, I don't want to say a line or hard at someone, but, a, you know, a one hopper that can freeze that runner and hopefully, you know, keep him at bay. First pitch Owings inside, a, a pop-up would this suffice? That's true. Yeah, a pop-up would work as well. I, I'm interested to see if Owings will try to bunt the runner to third here. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised at all if he does that. Well, fouled mm -hmm. off. Apparently he, not. Well, he went with a hack instead. It's interesting, you know, we haven't seen a, a lot this year of guys bunting people over. I don't know, you know, exactly what it is. Uh, coaches just, I mean, probably aren't giving the sign, obviously. I don't think yeah. the players would just say the heck with it. I'm not bunting, but just interesting here. Fastball called strike. Now it's one and two. Uh, I guess their thinking is the way they hit the ball last inning with the guys that, coming yeah. up, you yeah, just swing away point. here. Yeah, especially with the nine man getting on with a double. You have the heart of your order coming up. That's a good point. Oh, and a strike three. Bolton will throw down to first to retire. That's what you just let the doctor order out of the bullpen from Herzing, a strikeout for the first out here. Keeps that runner parked at second and gets a big first yeah, out Yeah, that's a, that's a huge, huge first out uh, for Jack Herzing. And that was a nasty breaker he threw there uh, to get that third strike and Owings chased it in the dirt, and a good job by Bolton blocking that thing up, not allowing it to move, not allowing anyone to move up either. Pertucci hunting a pitch that will miss outside. He decided to take there. Yeah, 0 for 3 so far. Struck out his last time up. 5-4, Blue Sox leading here. Pitch called a strike, 1-1. One one. Jaren still joined by Kellen Gersky tonight. We thought we, were gonna, we might not have to sweat too much tonight. Yeah. We were up 5-0 yeah. through the first five innings, but unfortunately the Paints, and why this is why they're the top team in the league, yeah. they're not going to go down quietly. They put four up last inning and now have the tying run at second with one out and a 1-1 one -one count. Here's the pitch. It's a little bit low, but Bolton liked it. He pointed out to Herzing. He's saying, yeah, you know what? More times out of not, more times than not, they're probably going to chase that pitch. It yeah. wasn't the case there. That was the pitch that Owings chased on strike three. Yeah, that's, a, that's a darn good pitch, but just didn't uh, get the chase. 2 1, fastball, fouled straight back. So now Herzing's in a good spot here. Yep. 2 2 count. You can probably throw that curveball, see if he'll chase it. Thanks, Spencer. All right, here we go. Herzing, check second. Mm. 
And now we'll step off the rubber. After time's called by Pertucci, trying to break it up here. Two two fat curveball bounced off the plate and that will go foul. Herzing was running after it to try to keep it fair, but uh, actually probably worked out because I don't know if he would have been able to throw that to Webb in time or not. He would have had to really <laughs> turn around quickly. Yeah, he would have had to almost throw it a across his body like a I don't even know how to describe like a fadeaway sort yeah. of type of thing. They would have had to stop all of his momentum and just kind of wing it all arm to to Webb. Luckily, we didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> A spoiler, and now another 2-2 offering from Herzing. is by Bolton to the backstop, and that'll move pegs up. Wild pitch, puts a tying run 90 feet away. Yeah, and that's one that Bolton would probably tell you he's got a body up when he's got a knockdown, and that's just tough. Uh, now you have a full count with one out. And all that uh, all that Petrucci's going to try to do is just put this ball in play, and you're probably going to score a run. Infield in. Here's the pitch. It's a bouncer foul. Well, going to third probably won't score no. a run now that now that I say that. No. I, I said a ball in play almost anywhere, but right at third base probably will not do it. With the infield playing in, I, I would say that they oh, might, that's true they too. might uh, a ball out of the infield get the run in, yeah. but, but uh, with the infield playing in here, pitch outside ball four. So now that sets up a double play ball, at least, right? Look at the positive. Yeah. And here's Chad Roberts with runners on the corners and one out in the seventh. A 5 4 ball game in favor of the Blue Sox, but the Paints have pushed it to the brink here. And then the next four guys, next five guys coming up for them all. Reach base their last time up. Swing and a miss from Roberts. Lefty-lefty matchup, I like that. Yeah, it's, this is a very good matchup for Herzing. Obviously, uh, Chad Roberts is two for three on the day, but hasn't faced the lefty. Well, swing and a miss again. A couple pitches by him, and now uh, he's in the hole. Uh, Roberts hitting 333 coming into tonight. From Northern Kentucky. 0 2. Goes with a pitch outside. Not a bad spot to miss. You got some leeway here. Yeah, I was thinking in my head that if I was Herzing, I was going to throw a, another high fastball. Obviously, um, obviously, Roberts had trouble with the first two. He mm. thought about it there for strike three. There, there it is. Go. Right there for called strike three. Yeah, that's a big, big pitch there from Herzig. That one might have been a, a, a curveball or some sort of breaking pitch. Kind of, uh, you kind of saw it in, in Robert's knees. He kind of buckled a little bit. Uh, he 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 was what he was expecting another fastball, and that one coming right at him, and then breaks right over the heart of the plate. That's a heck of a pitch for so, Jack Herzig. Since coming out of the bullpen, strikeout, walk, strikeout. Here's Callis, RBI single, his last time up. We got. Pegs at third and Pertucci at first. Two away, 5-4 the score throw over the first uh, uh, lollipop yeah. from Herzig. We've seen that a couple <laughs> times from Herzig. That's his, uh, that, that's his C minus move or maybe <laughs> D minus, I hope. And here's the pitch. It's inside. Good fastball, but off the plate. Callis. From Ohio State, leads the team in average with a 353 through 16 games. Herzing steps off after checking the runner. 1-0. Here's the pitch. It's a bit outside, 2-0. It's another good spot there, though, for Herzing. That's where you want to live, especially, you know, when the, the tying runs at at third and the, the go ahead is at first. You want to keep that ball low around the knees. You don't want to put it belt high, thigh high. That's where you get into trouble. Well, this is a big pitch here. 2 0, fastball outside, and now it's 3 0. Yeah, that's pretty much the same spot. And it's just uh, not getting it. Yeah, it just didn't get the call. I mean, that's a pitcher's pitch. I mean, that, that's a pitch that can go either way. That's right around the knees. Uh, maybe, you know, 
half an inch higher, that's definitely a strike. And a called strike here, three and one. That would look a little bit further out than the last one. But uh, hey, we'll take a strike. Yeah, and big pitch. Yeah, I, I, I'd be interesting. This is a fastball count for sure, but with yeah. I, I'd be interesting if Herzing brings that curveball. Chopper off the plate, that'll roll <laughs> foul. And it's 3 2. Runners will be off on the next pitch. Well, at least the runner at yeah. first. Luckily um, for the Blue Sox, that ball did roll foul because I don't think there was a chance no. they were going to get uh, callous, and that run would have definitely scored. There yeah. was no hesitation there at uh, third base by Pegs. He did. He went with that curveball. He chopped it right off the plate. Yeah, now, now, do you have uh, do you have the stones to do it again? I I would throw a fastball if if I'm Herzing. He comes with a ball. It's bounced to second. Parks throw to first in time. They'll strand the tying run at third base. Good job by Herzing out of the bullpen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's yes. inning stretch. No runs. One hit. No errors, two men left on base. That brings the total to six on the night for the Paints. It's stretch time here at Kelly Automotive Park. Butler, five, and Chillicothe, four. It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. There exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together we can work to eradicate the high level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female, and may be teenagers or middle aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game. <laughs> All right, well, let's see if the Blue Sox can get some insurance here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Blues, they're leading 5-4, to four, but they saw their lead get smaller and smaller here and almost evaporate completely yeah. last inning if it wasn't for Jack Herzing. Foul ball by Webb here. Uh, Jaren's still joined by Kellen Gursky. Uh, Kellen, uh, big, big inning from Herzing Skill. last inning to get that uh, – Final out at, and a couple of strikeouts coming out of the pen, stranding a leadoff oh. double. I mean, uh, Big's an understatement. I mean, that, that's that was the key so far in this game. Uh, Herzing coming out of the pen and uh, just, I mean, just throwing a bunch of strikes. He did walk one batter, but I mean, that was a that was pretty minuscule con uh, compared to what else happened. I mean, he struck out two, got big two big strikeouts, and then uh, got the weak ground ball to end the inning. I mean, you tip your cap there to Herzing. It really, I mean, that's a big moment in this game for both teams. Webb ahead 2-1. Pitch is a called strike on the outer half. Camrata com came in for McConaughey, who won an inning in a third, did not allow a run, struck out two and walked one. Well, pitch misses. Full count to Webb, who is 0 for 3 so far. Looking to get on base for the first time tonight. His pitch it is called strike three. Webb thought it was ball four, but he's rung up. And I'll tell you what, that's a consistent call tonight from Peck. He's he's um, pretty been pretty good. Uh, he, it, it is, his strike zone might be a little wide at times. But for the most part, he's been pretty consistent because he rung up a couple of paints tonight too on this yeah. similar pitches. Yeah, and that's a good pitcher's pitch there. I mean, a full count, that, that's a pitch that 
your Christian Webb looking back on it. That's a pitch you'd probably say, oh, I should have I should have at least tried to foul that thing off, um, you know, try to fight it off. And, and you're right, it's been consistent all night long, and that's yeah, uh, a, a tough pitch to take, 3-2. Kulikowski, ahead 1-0, you know, takes a called strike. Brady on the night is been on base all three times, was hit by a pitch, singled, and walked, and has a run scored. He also has a stolen base to his credit tonight, yeah. I think. That's right. That was on that uh, one that Calvin Scott was thrown yep. out at home. Ground ball through the hole, right over second base out into center field. Almost took Camerata with him on the way by. Yeah, almost got him right in the foot there. Uh, and a, a good piece of hitting by Gulikowski. It looked like it was, might have been an off-speed pitch, definitely down low. And, and uh, Gulikowski just put a good swing, hit it right up the middle. That's exactly where you're taught to take the ball. This is a point in the game where I think, in my opinion, you got to have Gonzalez. Uh, well, there's one out. Yeah. I was going to say maybe but, have him bunt yeah. with Maglione coming right. up the way he's been hitting. You need an insurance run here. I don't know if, if oh my goodness, that ball almost got Ooh. Ray. Thankfully, he's able to get out of the way. Oh. Those are the ones you don't want to get hit by. No, no, no. Yeah, definitely would never, will never be uh, say anything to anyone getting out of the way of a ball at their head, that's no. for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. But, um, yeah, so I don't know if, if five runs are going to be enough in this game. I really don't. The way the paints can hit, throw over to first, the bouncer, nice block by Bollinger. Um, so it'd be nice to get uh, one one or two more on the board here. It's been quiet last couple innings. Pitch inside, Ooh. two and one to Gonzalez. He walked his last time up. Yeah, and if Gonzalez can get on here, you hit it on the head with, with Maglione. He's hit the ball hard twice, and two out of the three times he's been up. He did K in his last at-bat, but you know, with, with Maglione, possibly two guys on, as it's a 3-1 count now. That's chances I'd like to, uh, I'd like to take. 3-1 now, and and uh, Payne's got another guy starting to throw out there. Doesn't look like he's in two. His pitch inside, ball four, back-to-back -back walks for Gonzalez, and two men on here with one out. And this is this is the chance here to make hay. You got Maglio yep. coming up, and then if I, I, nothing against Eric Bolton, he's he's been fine tonight. He's gotten on base twice, but I, I, I almost think you have to see Ferguson, yeah, uh, or 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 somebody, right? Come yeah, in maybe. Oh, well, Bolton's coming to the on deck circle. You know, well, I mean, he's caught a darn good game too, and you don't, you know, not to say that you know uh, someone off the bench isn't capable capable of doing it, but. When you're catching the whole game, you kind of have a flow. You, you yeah. know exactly how the game's going. You know how the other pitchers are throwing. And, you know, if you're a catcher off the bench and someone, you know, you go in, you, you obviously ask, you know, the other catcher, how's he throwing, what's working, what's not. You know, a catcher can tell you that, but, you know, you have to see it. And maybe that's what, uh, what what they're thinking and uh, keeping Bolton out there. Although, if the bases get loaded up, you, you might change your mind as well. You never know. Yeah. Eric has caught a very good game tonight, but um – yeah, you know, he's he's Ferguson. Maybe not might not be the guy because he he strikes out a lot. Right, and you don't want to strike out with, with bases loaded. And bases loaded or, or two guys on. You know, you want to put the ball and play hard. So, I mean, you got Murphy on the bench. Yep. Called strike. That's probably who I would actually pinch hit. Yeah, and situation. then put yeah. And then you could uh, put Gulikowski in at catcher, and then move. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about that because <laughs> you don't have Meeker tonight, too. That's another big yeah. thing. Yeah. and swings and misses. He's down 0-2. Yeah, that might be another reason they're keeping him out there, too. They don't really have the moves off the bench you could they normally do. Yeah. I mean, you could – I'm sure you could find somebody right. to play first base. Maybe move no, – because Webb – maybe move Webb into catcher. Yeah. And then Ferguson to first base. That might be the way to do yeah, it. Yeah, it would probably be the way to do it if you were going to do it. That's for sure. Uh, pitches inside one and two to Maglion Bolton takes the catcher's gear off. Uh, 
time call by Maglione, and it's awarded. It's a good job there by Maglione, not allowing uh, Camarada to get in his rhythm. Maglione trying to, to uh, you know, get him off his rhythm, kind of call time to reset himself as well. And here's the one, two. It's a swing and a miss strike three. Maglione down for the second out. Second K of the inning for Camrata, and that brings up Eric Bolton. They are going to let him hit here. Uh, with two outs, I can understand that a little bit more. He, yeah. Bolton has been on base twice. He drew a walk in the sixth, and it was hit by a pitch, but he's looking for his first hit in um, a, bit of, a bit of time. Had one and zero here. Bolton's last hit came on June eighth against Lafayette. He's I had one and zero here, Camrata. He's ready to deal and gets one by him. Looked like a late swing from Bolton. He was well behind that pitch. Yeah, I don't know if he was looking off speed there or just a late decision to swing, but regardless, I mean, really wasn't close to it. And if you're Camrata, I mean, this is a guy you want to go right at, obviously. You said hasn't had a hit in a long time. Bolton swings and misses. He's down one and two. That's a pretty good pitch from Camrata. Yeah, oh yeah. That was a very, very good pitch. Looked like it was a curveball down or a change up or some sort of off speed pitch. Yeah, had him out in front. And now the one two offering. Bolton strikes out to end the inning. Three K's in the inning for Camrata, sandwiched between a single and a walk. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two men left on base. We'll go to the eighth All with right, Butler ahead five to four. Jack Herzing will come out and work his second inning of relief. He did a great job stranding a leadoff double at second his last time up and uh, keeping the Blue Sox ahead five to four here. Bucci is in line for the W. Six innings, four runs, eight hits, one walk, six strikeouts. First pitch is a ball to Orloff, followed by Aslett and Picnic this inning. Pickney, of course, with a big three RBI double. Places clearing double. Foul ball out of play here. That got the paints within one here. Yeah, that's been uh, the key in this game, obviously, for, for Chillicothe. Um, that was the biggest biggest swing in the game for them uh, to this point. And they've had runners on that in that last inning, as you mentioned. 
uh, in the seventh. They had a leadoff double, but then stranded him out there, and they did get him to third, but couldn't get him any farther. Bouncer in, blocked by Bolton. Bolton is very solid behind the plate. He just uh, rarely makes a mistake. We had that, he had that one get by him last mm -hmm. inning, but outside of that, he's always out yeah. in front blocking balls. Seems like he communicates with the pitchers very well. Uh, he has a good arm. The ball hit out into oh right center and fairly deep. Going back to the wall and watching it bounce off the wall is Scott. He'll fire it in. And we're right back where we were last inning. A leadoff double has put the tying run in scoring position to begin the eighth. I tell you what, that ball, I mean, it, it was hit hard. Don't get me, but the thing was, it just kept going. It just hung up there for yeah. a while. I mean, I, I thought that Scott m might be able to make a play on it, but I mean, it just kept tailing away from him and scooted onto that wall. But um, as you said, Jack Herzing, he's been in this spot before. Obviously he didn't, he wasn't the one that gave up the double in the, in the last inning in the seventh, but you know, he's been in this situation before. Well, and I'll face Ben Aslett, who walked and scored in the sixth. And now a hard liner foul right past the coach's box. That ball was hit. That ball was scorched there uh, by Aslett. Just couldn't uh, keep it fair. And obviously almost <laughs> got his third base coach as well. Aslett uh, from Australia, from Melbourne. It's called strike here, 0-2. Oh we have our, our, our international players, Mr. Webb from Canada. Mm -hmm. we, they got a guy from uh, kangaroo country. Yeah. Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. 0-2. Oh Bouncer, nice block. Australia actually uh, not known for their baseball, but they've been coming... Uh, getting a better presence there over the last few years. Uh, we have a tournament down in Freeport every year, Freeport International. They always have Australian representatives. 1-2. Well, most got Aslett in the head over top of his head nonetheless. 2-2 two, two now. I don't know why I just thought of this, but another thing that Australia does that has, uh, I don't know why. Cricket? With that, well, yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> no, uh, punters. NFL punters ah, yeah. come from Australia yeah. a lot. Australian rules, guys. Yeah. yeah. Yep, you're right. There was a special on ESPN when, obviously, when the NFL season was going on that was all about that. It was kind of wild. 2-2 two is a bouncer. Another good block from Bolton. And now a ball thrown to the back top. Throw to third is also wide, and thankfully Gulikowski able to keep that from going into left field. A walk and a wild pitch move put runners in on the corners with nobody out. And now, if you're that's two in a row that he threw yeah. extremely high. Bolting out to talk to him. Yeah, and, and Forbes is going to yeah. come out too, and that's a smart visit here. Talk to hers and got to calm him down here. You know, Chillicothe uh, now in, in prime position uh, to, to, to steal a run and tie this ball game up. Although, if you're Butler, I'm pretty sure you would trade a, a run for a double play here. If you can get a ground ball and turn it, uh, I think you're, that's what you're going to try to do. And Forbes is going to call the infield in here, probably telling them, you know, if I were to guess, I would say that middle is going to play back and the corners are going to play up. But, um, but just, uh, you know, I, that would be what I would think, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to see a big inning come through either. You're right. Uh, man, it's just, it's tough. You don't want to, I can see what, what we're going to see the alignment here in a second, but man, you almost want to uh, try to cut down that runner at home plate if you can. Who knows, maybe they'll get a bouncer right back and get a double play and hold That's that true. runner at third. Yeah, it could be a hard one-hop shot to third or something like that. Yeah, or, or a comeback right to the pitcher. Right, yeah, you got to freeze on that. You can't, at third base, you can't really take off on a ground ball to the pitcher. Well, here is Pick, Picnic, and boy, he could really do some damage here, and he's Ooh. going to. That ball's hit, well, it's in the shallow right field. Calvin Scott makes the catch. Runner oh bluffs. Boy. 
Now the, the runner takes off for second. He'll get there. Good base running out there yep. by Aslett to get into scoring position. Uh, good throw by Scott. Actually uh, eluded two guys. That wasn't on him. That was a heck yeah. of a throw home. And um, now the good news is you got it out. The bad news is yeah. you had two runners in scoring position. Uh, so let me ask you, Dalton Bollinger has been one of, is one for three tonight. Kellen, do you, do you walk him here and set up a double play ball? Well, uh, I don't. I don't. I don't think you can. No, because the next guy's one for three too. You just uh, have pegs hit a double and yeah. oh boy, oh, bouncer! Oh, it's up in the air oh. forever. <laughs> and Bolton's able to track it. Oh my, that thing that thing had a oh. bite of its own. And we're gonna have a a talk here. See if the ball hit um, hit Bollinger's foot. I think it hit the plate first and then hit his foot. Oh. Oh. He's been awarded first base. So, well, here comes Cody out of the dugout to argue it. That hit the plate. Hey, I'm pretty yeah. sure it hit the plate first. Yeah, it definitely hit the plate first. That ball's live at that point. We're not live, but. Oh, boy. Well, you know, this could work out in their favor. Put it in pen. That's hit, true. Hit by pitch. Base is loaded here with one out. Pegs, if he he's hit, uh, he has a ground out to his credit tonight, so. It's a lefty-lefty matchup. Yeah, I guess that is that is a matchup that you're... The next two guys are lefties, actually. Yeah, yeah. obviously you don't want to see uh, Owings come up in this inning. You're going to try to... Oh, unless it's by way of a strikeout here for Pegs. But Pegs uh, scorched one to the gap uh, in the seventh. Osloff at third. Orloff, I should say. Aslett at second. And Bullinger at first. First pitch is a called strike to Pegs. Herzing. Living dangerously here. <laughs> Yeah, he, he did it in the in the uh, last inning, too. In the seventh, he had a man at third that would have tied the game. Obviously, not a, as big of a pressure cooker situation as this is. But. Foul ball off general mission. Look out. Everybody's all right. Yeah, we're in uh, Kenny Loggins' danger Ooh. zone right now. Yeah. Base is loaded. One run lead. 5-4 the score. And an 0-2 count on pegs. Now you can throw that curveball. you got to yeah. trust Bolton to be able to block it, but I, I would say... You, I would throw it because, actually, the guy's out anyways because right, he can't advance exactly. to first base. 0-2, he goes with a high fastball that, uh, that now maybe they set him up for that right. curveball. You know, in, in one thing that helps them, too, he's got free reign probably does Herzing uh, to throw that curveball because the backstop here isn't that, isn't that long. Even if yeah. the ball gets through Bolton, you're probably not going to move up at third base. Well... It's a one-two count. Here's the pitch. It's all right there. He got him with a curveball on the outside corner. What a pitch from Herzing, two away. Yeah, and that's exactly what we talked about, setting him up for that curveball. And that one, an absolute beauty. It dropped right over the corner. That's exactly how you draw it up. And now Herzing uh, can breathe a little bit easier, that's for sure. He's two-thirds of the way there. Here's Owings. He struck him out last time. Herzing got to get some rosin. Well, he's back up on the hill. First pitch, fastball, fouled into general mission. Jeez, oh, man, that, that area over there is getting a workout. I don't, not quite sure where that one went. I think it might have been went out of the it, stadium. It, I think it went on the, on the deflection. Yeah, that was weird. Well, everybody's all right again, thank goodness. Well, one, fastball right there for a called strike. Now you can take him wherever yeah. you want him. Whew. I mean, Herzing, I can tell by by looking at him, him walking around, he's amped up right now. He's he's just in a in a different mode. I mean, he's just getting right on that hill, walking around. I mean, that's this is a big pitch here. All right, well, he can take him anywhere he wants. He played good with the high fastball. He died, oh, ground ball. Oh. Diving stop by Parks, throw it off first, he didn't get him. Oh, what an effort by Parks, the game's tied at five. I mean, that's a heck of an effort by Pavin Parks. And really, I mean, that was his only play was the first base. Yeah, it he was. really didn't have anywhere else to go. Um, you know, if it wasn't a lefty, actually, it might have been. Or, what was, was it a lefty? Yeah, lefty. yeah it was, yeah. yeah. Uh, if it wasn't a lefty, that would have been interesting to see. Uh, uh, I feel so bad for Jack. He made a great pitch. Uh, yeah. Maybe 0-2, he probably didn't want it that spot, but. You got to give credit to Owings. He gets yeah. the ball in play and gets the out. And now the Blue Sox are going to go to the bullpen as Herzing's night is complete. The game is tied at five, and we'll see who's coming out of the pen here. 
Looks like Wyatt Doherty, possibly. No, no. Uh, Twenty. I think it's twenty-six. I believe. That's Connor Coward. He was just signed this afternoon. He'll be coming in to replace. Herzing. Well, of course, we know Connor from last summer. Five five now, the score. New pitcher for the Butler Blue Sox from Seneca Valley High School, Connor Cower. So Herzing goes. One and two thirds innings. He allowed one run. He's responsible for everybody aboard right now. So they can't close the book on him. He allowed two hits. He walked two and struck out three. Three. Yep. Yeah, you you do feel bad uh, in that outing for Herzing. I mean, he pitched uh, extremely well. He did pitch into himself into some trouble. But, I mean, if that pitch, or if that ball, excuse me, that's hit goes a foot to the right, it's an easy, easy backhanded play over there for Pavement Parks. The inning's over. But, you know, yeah. that's just how it goes. And, you know, at, at least uh, Pavement Parks stopped that ball from going through and would have give, yeah. given Chillicothe, uh, you know, the lead. Probably would have scored two runs. Yeah, it scored two. It might have scored a third one. Yeah. Possibly. But. That's neither here nor there now. If Connor Coward can get an out here, we'll go into the ninth, or the bottom of the eighth tied with a chance to maybe get a run and get the lead back. Connor Coward from Virginia Tech. He was a weekend starter with the uh, Hokies this year. Well, obviously a very good pitcher for us last summer, an all-star, and uh, gr glad to have him back yep. again. And he's, uh, you know, as he you said, just signed earlier today. He actually start, started a home opener last year. Yeah, that's true. He did. But as I said, he, he's, you know, gotten a big spot here in his first day with the team. Line drive. That'll go foul down the right field line. And make it out of play for Pertucci, who goes to uh, Marietta College, native of Farmington, West Virginia. Oh, one big cut and a miss from a fast ball from Coward. That pitch looked like it was behind Petrucci when he swung at that yeah. thing. I mean, that had some heat on it there for Coward. Just a bit of juice there. Yeah, just a little bit. And now he's got a move too. Fast ball <laughs> upstairs. Boy, he's got a live arm. I, I, yeah. He I, keeps reminding every once in a while. I remember it last summer. He throws 93, 94. He can, he can really ramp it up. And I think uh, he's got a good opportunity to be drafted next year. Thought he was going to go this year, but uh, slipped through the cracks. Fastball, bit high, bounces out of the middle. Bolton, who had to retrieve it, but still 2-2 here. That's still a darn good pitch there uh, for Coward. That's uh, that high fastball, as you said. And it's 90, you know, 92 or... You know, higher. It's, that's a tough pitch to lay off, chest high, I tell you. Another pitch high now where you've you got to throw a strike. Yeah, you've got to probably throw a fastball, I'm assuming. I mean, you might as well just, you know, throw it right down the middle. He's had trouble hitting it. Uh, he swung yeah. and missed big twice. You might as well just try to throw it right down the, right down the middle here. Runners take off. Here's the pitch. Swing! And a miss strike three. He got him. <coughs> and keeps his game tied here. One run comes in on two hits, no errors, and three men are left aboard. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It's 5-5. Five, five. Everyone's favorite part of the week is Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50-cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesox.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox.
All right, here we go. Bottom of the eighth inning. The new ball game here. 5-5 five, five the score. Stefan Merconja, who had two RBI single back in the second, will lead it off here against Camarada, who is out there to work his second inning. Actually, uh, pitch came in the, in the sixth, so it's third inning. Yep. Reconcha behind 0 and 1. Here's the pitch. It's a swing Ooh. and a miss on a nasty pitch on the outer half. Well, what started on the outer half ended yeah. up outside the zone, but nasty nonetheless. Yeah, that was a heck of a pitch there, and Merconja had it in his head that he was swinging at it. And that's what happens sometimes. You just wave at a pitch that makes you look a little silly. Crew on deck, and here's the 0-2. Uh, check yes swing. He, yeah, he went around anyways. Strike three. And one away here in the bottom of the eighth inning for Ben Carew. Has been on base every time tonight. Two fielder's choices, a single and a walk. Yeah, it'd be big for Ben Carew to get on base here and, and get the guys behind him opportunity to you know, hit with him on. And so far, uh, he's been on uh, every time tonight, as you said. He's only scored once, though, so. Trying to change that are the Blue Sox. Oh one, ground ball foul down the first base line. Looks like uh, Carew is a little behind uh, Camarada. It looked like the same thing was uh, the same thing was going on with Mercon. Like they were a little yeah. behind. I think that lefty really uh, that uh, McCauney. Really uh, mess with the hitters now because now they're going from a guy from the left side that's throwing slow back to a guy uh, from the right side that's throwing the ball pretty hard. Oh, two, just a bit outside. Take that. Yeah, you're right. This guy seems to have pretty good. Any that breaking pitch he threw to yeah. was impressive. Yeah. Um, five five ball game. Pitch well away. Easy to take that one for Ben Carew. He's got himself back in the count at two apiece. Babe the Ox beating the drum. Trying to get the fans into it here. And here's the pitch. Check swing. Called a strike three anyway. Back to back K's begin the bottom of the eighth. Did that hit his bat? Did you hear like a little Number click? 13. I don't know. I did. I, yeah, it might have been a mitt. It might have been the mitt too. It just was kind of funny because it's like as soon as he like yeah. checks along, yeah. there was like a, a double click. That was kind of weird. Well, here's Parks with two away. 5-5 five, five ball game. Brand new one. Both starters, Niggemeyer and... Bucci are both going to leave here tonight with a no decision. Foul ball into the net. Uh, Babe was a little scared <laughs> by that. Duck, duck behind the dugout, but yeah. he's back up beat the drum now. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he's changing the beat up, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Getting everybody into yeah. it. Yeah. Ball hit the center field, going back, and still going back towards left center is Callis, and he makes the catch out there to end the inning. Now for the bottom half of the eighth, One, two, three, go to the Sox in the bottom of the eighth. We'll go to the ninth. It's 5-5. Five, five.
All right, Chad Roberts ready to go here in the top of the ninth. It's 5-5. Five, five. Ground ball to first. Webb will flip to Coward covering for the out. I tell you what, Christian Webb, no. Christian Webb, there we go, really has looked good over at first base as we talked about earlier in the, in the broadcast that, you know, he doesn't play a whole lot of first base. He's kind of a converted first baseman because the only first baseman they have is is Ferguson. So, uh, But that's not an easy play to make, to lead a pitcher like that on an underhand toss. That takes a ton of practice, and, and Webb uh, doing a good job of it tonight. Called strike on a fastball to Callis. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss. Another good fastball. Connor's got that heater going here. He, uh, You know, it's funny. The guy who started tonight, Nick Bucci, wore his number last year. Uh, that's the number that Connor wore last year, 14. So he's going to try to clean, clean it up for him here tonight. Although no decision on that one. Fastball inside. Callis from Ohio State. One for four tonight. RBI single in the... Sixth inning, the four-run sixth inning for the Paints. Yeah, foul Ooh. tip off of Bolton. He seems to be okay, though. He charges out to get the ball. I think that was uh, mm. one that caught right off of his padding a little, maybe off the off the shoulder, but looks like he's got some padding up there. That one stings a little bit, but <laughs> not nearly as bad as when you get hit with no padding at all. Yeah. I can think of worse places to be hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can think of a couple. Uh, yeah. yeah, me too. Well... Still one and two here with one out. Connor ready to bring the heat again, I think. Here it is. Fastball, a bit, bit high. Actually, he took a little bit off of that one. It's Coward's miss tonight. He's been out there for a brief amount of time, but he's missed high. Now foul ball, another one off of Bolton. Yep. Poor guy. <laughs> Takes this one off the mask. I think, more I think, of a glancing yeah, blow. I think he got the glove first, then kind of the top of the mask. So, as you said, nothing, not, not a straight liner off the bat or anything like that. Another 2-2. Two -two, <laughs> got him. He went with a slider that time. Strikes out Callis for the second out. That that was nasty. Yeah, that, that was grade A nasty there. That was one of the better sliders. Uh, actually, probably one of the only sliders that, that Cowherd has broken off in his short stint of work tonight. Well, here's Orloff. He's reached base the last three times he's been up. Two singles and a double. And has a scored a tying run last inning. Takes a called strike on it. Another heavy, heavy fastball from Coward. Yeah, and, and Coward really uh, just looks like the same pitcher he was last year so far. Although he's only faced three men, and he's still. Well, one foul ball straight back. Yeah, well, he's got... Chance for one more here. Trying to get his third strike out of the night. Here's the pitch. Ooh, just missed outside. Good location. Yeah, very good location. It was a little low, though, and Bolton had to frame that one up. And normally that's a key to an umpire that the pitch was low when the, you know, the catcher raised his glove up like that. But... That's exactly what you're taught to do as a catcher, make it look good, and, and Bolton did that. One, two, a little flare. That'll make it out of the stadium. My goodness, that didn't get much higher uh, than uh, our, our eye level, no. but found its way out. There goes some kids with ideas of trying to find that ball. <laughs> There's called strike three, third K for Connor Coward. And we'll go to the bottom of the ninth with the score tied at five.
Calvin Scott leads off the bottom of the ninth. Kellen just off here said he's hitting a digger. So if he does, it's all, uh, it would be a wonderful thing because it would walk us off here tonight. Yeah. 5-5 five, five the score, bottom of the ninth. Ten hits for the Paints, eight for Butler, two errors for Chillicothe, none for the Blue Sox. Pitch is high to Calvin Scott to begin the bottom of the ninth. And the drum is keeping the beat out here. Yep. A couple of young kids with some rally caps on, even though we've never trailed. I, <laughs> I, I, I like the effort. Yeah. Called absolutely. strike, one and one. One one, Scott takes a called strike. Scott with a pair of RBIs tonight, a single, a couple of strikeouts as well. One two, ooh, Oof. just outside. Nice oh. take. Scott thought about it, but he did enough discipline to hold off. Yeah, it's a heck of a pitch as well uh, by Camarada. He just, it looked like a maybe an off-speed pitch that he just snapped off, and Scott did a good job, as you said, laying off and taking that for a ball. 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball over to Cody Harold. Oh. Two hopper. He's got it. He throws it right back to the pitcher. Yeah. That's not an easy play to make with your bare hand, I tell you that. He played uh, a lot of outfield at Seton Hill, but did play a little bit of second base here. <laughs> two, two, one more time. Scott almost Ooh. got hit by it. He's able to get out of the way. Full count. Yeah, that's a pitch that, you know, maybe, uh, obviously you're not thinking about getting hit, but, you know, you need that leadoff guy on no matter what way you can do it. And uh, that's a pitch that possibly Scott could have taken, but nonetheless, here comes the pitch. Payoff. Hard hit I ball. Uh, Cody thought about that one. But yeah. I, the <laughs> alligator arm. Uh, yeah, he made, sure. he made an executive decision not to put his hands up to get that one. That was, uh, that was scorched. Regardless, good at bad here for Scott. Looking to get rewarded for it. Payoff. Scott with a check swinger, roll it. Oh my goodness, that went into the general mission section. Again, thankfully nobody hit by it. Oh my lord. That was, that, that was one, that if it was at us, I don't know if we would have enough time to react. I don't know, I mean that was, that uh, was oh boy. And no one was really looking over there. It was, there was like a family over there. None of them saw it hit no. the bleachers, they all jumped. Yeah. Again, 3 2. Few spoilers here from Scott. Here's the pitch. It's outside ball four. What did that bat for Calvin Scott to begin it in the bottom of the ninth? No doubt about it. It's not the dinger that I predicted, but hey, we'll take that too. A heck of an at bat. Probably close to a 10 pitch at bat there for Calvin Scott. And now Christian Webb comes up, and oh, the paints look like they're going to have a mound visit here. Yep. So I can tell you how many pitches that at bat was. Eight pitches. Oh, close to a 10 pitch yeah. at bat. Actually, nine. Nine. I beg your pardon. Yeah. Because it. Yeah. The ball four. Ball was four. Nine. Yeah. Yeah, ball four was nine. But still. Yeah. Now they're going to take Camarada out. Yes, they are. That's it for him. Wow. He goes. Um, Two and two thirds innings. Plus, I guess if you want to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Responsible for Scott, but he's he did a pretty good job out of the pen. Albini, he, he did walk a few guys. Yeah. Uh, let's see. One, two, three walks. And, but he didn't have the strikeout going too. Six strikeouts. Yeah. So. We gave up what two hits? One hit. One. 
One hit. That was the single by Gulikowski. Oh, that's seventh. right, right up the middle, yep. So here comes Chris Robinson to relieve him. We'll get a stat line on Robinson for the summer here in a second. He's a right-hander from Metropolitan Community College of Maplewoods. Not quite sure where that is. <laughs> Probably near a city though, because it's a Metropolitan Community College. So he's 2-0 with a 1.76 earned run average. Eight games, all out of the bullpen. 15 in the third innings, 10 strikeouts, three walks, 16 hits. He, uh, his last outing against West Virginia two days ago, he allowed one run on in one and two thirds innings, three hits, and struck out two. Once again, now batting number 24, the first baseman. That was only the second time this year in his eight outings that he allowed a run. The other one came against Kokomo in an 8 6 win. He allowed two runs on three hits in two thirds of an inning. Would you be surprised to see Christian Webb bun here? I would, but I wouldn't rule it out. Webb's going to take outside. Wouldn't rule anything out at this point. You got the. I would say that, that he's going to, but then I looked up and looked at the hole they're giving him on that left side. I mean, a ground ball to that left side is going to get through. I mean, the yeah, third baseman's playing, playing on the back. I'm not quite sure why. It's probably because he's protecting a bun, I guess. That, I don't think you want to, you don't want to give up a double down the line. because nope, Yeah, no doubles Calvin defense. Scott would probably score on a, on a ball down the line. I actually would much rather see Calvin just try to take second here. Yeah. Ball's popped oh up. Boy. That's way up there. He doesn't see he it. He doesn't see it. He has no he, idea. No, nobody it's does there. It's down. It's down. Oh, nobody ever saw it. The shortstop, Pertucci, the left fielder, Orloff, well, he shouldn't have seen it. It was nowhere near him. And it just falls in for a base hit. That ball was up, <laughs> up, up, up in the air for a long time. You know, we lost it too. Yeah, I did too. But, I, but they had no, no shot at it. I, no, and and you know, off the bat, I, I thought in the back of my head this might be tough. You know, it got it got way up in the sky. You know, it's a tough play. Third baseman's not anywhere close to the ball. He's playing right even with the bag. Shortstop never moved. If only Calvin Scott would have known where it was, yeah. he might have been able to score. Two on, nobody out. Gulikowski at the plate. Here's the pitch. It's a curveball that's in there for a called strike. That's tough for Robinson, too. You get him to pop up, and nobody saw it off the bat at all. Bertucci yeah. stayed put it short. The left yeah. fielder never moved. You saw, you got it right away. He said he never saw it. Well, it wasn't his fault. The ball landed just outside the infield. Yeah. Called strike here, 0-2. And, and Gulikowski just got to try to put this ball in play. Uh, you don't want to go out uh, by a strikeout here. That's right, uh, down 0-2 here. Uh, here's the pitch, Gulikowski fouls it off to stay alive. And yeah, nice swing there by Gulikowski too. He's just trying to cut cut the ball in half, cut his swing down, you know, hit, hit a line drive or a ground ball. You know, a pop-up really doesn't do you all that much. You wanna make it a, a productive out if you're gonna make an out. The only with the uh, pop-up on here it might in induce the infield fly roll. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't matter if they catch it or not, it'd be right. With two men on here. 0-2, Gulkowski fouls it into the net. Late swing, gets yep. a piece of it. That's a late breaker that, that uh, Robinson has thrown a couple times now. He that, that broke real late, and Gulkowski did a good job waiting for it to break and fouling it off. Yep. Well, still an 0-2 count for Oh, oh line drive to right there, that's head. over his head, it's down, and here comes Calvin Scott, he is going to score a walk-off double for Gulikowski, the Blue Sox win 6-5. to five. Well, we're going to head down to the field. Kellen uh, will take you through it. Yes, Big sir. win here. Yeah. Jaron hits it on the head. A huge walk-off win uh, for the Butler Blue Sox in a uh, 
in a game against the first place Chillicothe Paints and uh, it's a big W for uh, for the Blue Sox and obviously as we were talking about he was uh, or the Blue Sox excuse me uh, have been in last place they've lost four in a row and then uh, this is such a big win uh, the walk off RBI double by Brady Kulikowski and uh, I'm going to wait here for for Sharon to interview Brady Gulakowski. You should be able to hear it here over our uh, over the loudspeaker. But just real quick, Gulakowski reached base every time he came up tonight. Was three for three and also got walked and got hit by a pitch tonight. So on base all five times he came up. Also scored a run and had that big game-winning RBI. And uh, that's that's a heck of a way to end the ball game, and just a complete complete performance by by the Butler Blue Sox. Although that that sixth inning was tough, the fourth the four run sixth uh, for the Chillicothe Paints allowed them to get back in the ball game. But um, the rest of the way, uh, Jack Herzing came in and pitched almost two innings, it pitched one and two thirds, I should say, gave up one earned run, struck out three, but kept the uh, kept the Blue Sox right where they needed to be and limited the damage. And uh, Jaron's down there waiting for, for Gulikowski, I think, having a little team team meeting right in front of him here. Jaron's kind of waiting, but it looks like it's going to be over here, and I think we'll get our interview. And it looks like it's going to happen right now. Jaron's ready to go, I think. Well, Jaron's ready to go. I don't think Brady Gulikowski's ready to go yet. But he's All right, ladies, coming now, I think. We're going to send it down to Jared Steele, who has the Northwest Insurance player of the game, Brady Golikowski. Take it away, Jared. Thanks, Jaron. And uh, I don't know if the camera picked it up, but Jaron was uh, hit, I think, uh, I don't know, by a rapper of some sort. That was kind of, that's kind of funny. I'm going to have to ask him about that when he gets back up here. But, uh, yeah, I'll wait till he gets up here so we can wrap things up. But a big win uh, for the for the Blue Sox. Uh, they win 6-5. Brady Gulikowski, as I said, 3-for-3, three three, reached all five times he came up tonight. And uh, Jaron's making his way back up. Uh, I'll ask I'll ask about the. Did you get hit with something out there? Once again, piece of gum in the face. Oh, nice. That's good, That's good stuff. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. It was, a, it, was, it was just nice to win. You know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. Gulikowski. Big RBI double yeah. gets us the W here tonight. Uh, Chris Robinson. He doesn't get the loss because it goes to Kim Roddick because that ball was, or that runner was his yeah. out there. Calvin Scott who come in to score. So, whew. it made it interesting. It was five nothing yeah. at one point. We had to go to six five, but uh, hey, got to win. That's a that's a big deal at this point in the summer, you know. Now, yeah. you know. It's, uh, if that, uh, you know, get rid of a four-game losing streak. And um, O2 pitch, nonetheless, that he smashed out the um, right field over Owings' head to get us a win here this evening. So uh, final score, 6-5 in favor of Butler. Um, what do you, what, uh, anything you want to add before we sign off here tonight? No, uh, just a really good victory the whole way around uh, for Butler. Bucci pitched the ball pretty well tonight, although he did give up four runs. Um, kept kept the Sox right where they needed to be in position to win the game, and uh, the defense played well tonight. Uh, no errors up there on the on the scoreboard, and you know that's a good way. And they score six runs, so every facet of the game contributing in some way. Yeah, it was 
It was fun. It was, it was just a fun, uh, always fun to walk off. Uh, it, it was nerve-wracking for a while, <laughs> but uh, we'll take it. We'll do it again tomorrow night, 7.05. Bryce Spack, the probable for the Blue Sox tomorrow evening when they pay, take on these Chillicothe paints here at Kelly Automotive Park on a fireworks night. Um, so for my broadcast partner, Kellen Gursky, my producer, Allison Schubert, thanks for tuning in tonight. I'm Jaron Steele signing off. Final score, Butler 6, Chillicothe 5. We walk it off here tonight in Butler, and we'll do it again tomorrow. Thanks, and have yourselves a good night.